And we are live.
Fun Boy Modeling School. Welcome to the Fanboy Modeling School. I'm the Fat Mantis, now in HD. I'm here with my man. Steve, also in HD. What's going on, my Hedro life partner? Well, it's getting nuts because I think it's been about a week and a half. Yes, 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 yes. On a show, but technically <laughs> that's within the two-week range you're allowed to, you know what I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. I, well, we A lot to discuss, a lot of crazy things happening. Yeah, a lot of crazy stuff happening, man. And for everyone out there, you are you are chilling with the Fat Mantis and Steve, real name, no gimmicks, here on Fanboy Modeling School, where we tail, tear apart pop yes. culture and all the latest news that's yes. to print throughout pop culture and basically everywhere. Right. Um, a, a lot going on in this world. Um, and, yo, guys, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, follow, sub, roll it out, throw roll the out. spoons uh bits googles what? gammas what? What, whatever it is whatever app you're listening you're bootlegging this on give us the love send us that love well greetings and greetings and salutations to anyone joining us on x and instagram for the first time working successfully if you are over on instagram if you can just let me know if the audio is working just type in the chat over there. Let us know if you can hear us. If it's not working, I'm not. I'm not fixing it. I'm not hey, look, fixing it is Mad Cat in the house. What up, brother? <laughs> um, it's so it's great that Mad Cat is here because we have so much entertainment news. Which is yes. funny. This is how this podcast started. We really? used to cover entertainment until there was no entertainment. Nothing was entertaining right, anymore. Right, right, right. Everything Not was political, and then we got, got kind of stuck in between it all, right? <laughs> exactly. And shout out to my man, MX. I just realized that MX tried to troll me hard and almost sent me down the worst path I said, is the audio working over on Instagram? And they replied, no, it's not. And I almost flipped out. Yeah. Like, How could he respond? This guy, this guy. And uh, I think a lot of you, first thing I got to say is I'm going to give uh, my first honorable mention is to my damn self. Right? Oh, honorable and mention. so the best way to get people into your podcast this week right. is to post a selfie while you're in the ER. Oh, 100%. I listen. I poisoned you, and I knew that it would work out to my benefit. And I'm, I'm there, slowly slipping arsenic into your drinks for years, and it's finally paying off, mother. Yeah, so I'm sitting got- there. I'm dying. I'm dying in the ER, and everyone and their mother is hitting me up. And a shout out to everyone who hit me up on that one. Hey, and- you love to see it, man. You yeah, love don't to worry. See I'm it. alive. I'm living the dream, and obviously, I'm here. Unless I've been replaced by one oh. of those Biden clones. Uh, oh, who would replace you? I, Biden clones. Are we about to get conspiratorial in here? So it is my theory that the only way that Biden sounded clear and coherent during the State of the Union address was that they um, had a clone of him. Like a doom bot. Who, yeah, who had like <laughs> internally was youthful, but right. externally just had saggy skin and a crazy look in his eye. Oh, I can dig it. I can so dig it. I love that. I love the thought of that. Welcome in, Bex. Yo, know, Bex, fan girls for fanboys. Thank you very much. Um, but my real first honorable mention. Yeah, let's hit it. Is going out to wood. Pops. But not just wood, hardwood. Super pops. The <laughs> hardest of the wood. Where am I going with this? <laughs> so my gamer chair broke. One of the wheels came out. Nice, on, nice. It came, made it all unstable, and I was like, "F this! I gotta find a substitute." And I go downstairs and I take this thing—a hardwood, <laughs> not good looking, doesn't impress anyone. 
It's like one of the. It's like a punishment chair that you put a kid in in some right. one of the old fashioned European schools where they hit you over the knuckles with a ruler when you're bad. Right, right, right. it up here, and I'm loving it. You so you're loving the wood up there. I'm loving the wood. Say up there. I don't. Why would I say that? <laughs> Because you said you that part? I, but I will admit, I'm loving the wood. And yo, out, out, yo, in the chat, please let us know if you love that wood too. Savvy Mama, welcome in, welcome in, Fanboy Modeling School. Shout out to everyone over on Instagram and X and any other place where a stream yard doesn't allow me to see your comments without going to a secondary window. <laughs> um. All right. Well, I'm glad you uh, you got that sorted out. You got you found yourself a nice flaccid piece of wood and. uh Jimmy rigged it, shoved it up there, and everything seems to be working great. You know what I realized? I realized that... <laughs> Sorry, it, it finally absorbed what you're saying. Um, you know what it is? I realized I hate to be comfortable. Well, I mean, you, you're taking a 12-inch piece of wood, and that's anti-comfortable, right? Would you say? <laughs> um, yes, taking a 12-inch 12, 12 piece of hardwood is... is, uh, is is the anti comfortable? Um, do you have any honorable mentions? Hmm. I do, as a matter of fact. Um, so before we get into like one of our main topics, we got to just talk about something that happened today. Uh, Rob from Comics Explain went over to Nerd Theory, not Nerd Theory, uh, the guy that used to host the podcast with Star Wars Theory. Yeah, that's that's Nerd Theory. Nerd Theory, is that his name? Oh, Den, no, I'm sorry. Den of Nerds. Den of Nerds. Den of Nerds. And they went, he went over there and they were talking about X-Men 97, right? Mm -hmm. And Rob from Comics Explained does not get into a bunch of political commentary in regards to popular media. If something sucks, he talks about why it sucked on a creative level or why he loved it on a creative level. So he's always consistent that way. And he was talking about X-Men 97, episode 5, the Genosha Massacre, right? And so good. He, so good. he actually rated it higher than Endgame. For him, in his top three most epic endings or endings that are epic and good, he said Infinity War, that episode, episode five, the Genosha Massacre, and then Endgame. I just wanted to see what your thoughts were on that. Look, I often am quoted as saying X-Men 97 is the best thing Marvel has ever put out. And I go on and on and on about that. But that's kind of like a figure of speech. I do not believe that it's fair to compare live action to cartoon. Right. And trust me, if that was live action, that, that half an hour would have been better than Endgame. But you yeah. have to remember, it's animation and they're kind of cheating in the, in the fact that like with animation, you could literally do anything. Yeah, no. I remember, one they have a seven hundred story uh, sentinel that shits out other sentinels, <laughs> destroying an island nation of nothing but mutants. And it's not one of those cheesy, you know, Fox movie where you see the mutants running around the school. Like these were real mutants. Right, 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 right. That's right, a, right. that's epic. However, it is they have to. The reason it only works in cartoon is no one could afford to do that scene. Right, so I don't think it's fair to compare them. Is what what I'm ultimately saying. I do love it. I thought it was an amazing episode. Yo, I, it made me feel all these emotions all over the place. Real quick, Savvy Mama says, "Mantis, I'm loving the wood." <laughs> That's what I like to see. That's what I like to see. Um, Matt says, "Mantis, you see that Brazilian woman bring that dead dead dude to bank." To try to get his money, I do not know what that is. Wow! See, and that's the type of creativity that America is lacking nowadays, oh right? She she did the weekend at Bernie's. Um, Shout out to her. So I concur with everything you're saying. You can't really compare live action to animated because it's just like comics. Animation has, and Rob actually said this too from Comic Explain. You know, you don't have to deal with a few different elements with animation and comics. You don't have to worry about your favorite actor who's playing your favorite character getting old. So you can just stay. Heavily invested in this shit. If they change the voice actor, that might throw you off a little bit. But a lot of people didn't know they changed Storm's vo the voice actor for Storm from season uh, one to season two on the original X Men uh, cartoon. Right. Would know, right? You know, just some highfalutin pontificating person came in and took over. I think, though, saying that it was better than Endgame is a stretch. I understand the reasons he gave. He felt as if though Endgame was more epic than it had substance. 
I, on the other hand, look at Endgame for what it was supposed to be, the crescendo and the end of a multi-billion dollar franchise that just didn't know when to leave. Endgame is that one homeboy at the party that takes one more drink. That's what the MCU is. You know when it's like you're just me. <laughs> yeah, just definitely. Just I'm always I always need just to wet my lips. <laughs> so good once it hits your lips. Um yeah, yo, I, I gotta educate fools out here when, when they're grading okay. on their on their grades right now. Here's okay. another thing that Endgame did, and trust me, this show did do the same thing for episodes one through four. But here's what I'm saying: Endgame stood on the soldiers of like 20 other movies. Right. To get to that level of that epic, you had to first start with Captain America and Iron Man and all those solo movies. And right. we worked our way all the way up to the point where there is no way you're not emotionally connected to every character right. happening in Endgame. Right, right, right. I, I cried even for Loki. And before Loki series, I hated Loki. Mm. He was a British pretty boy. And you know what I think about Brits? yeah yes right? yes and so it, somehow they did it but it was amazing and so it's like weird when people are like well i don't understand why aren't the next five marvel movies just like endgame you need to ramp up to it you need to work your way up to it. they have no more epic stories because they exhausted them all in endgame they have to work their way up to it now trust me i do think they're doing a horrible job in phase four i'm gonna shit all over that and mm. you know um but uh, what I'm saying is they do need to ramp up. They can't just have Avengers five be as epic as Endgame. No, no, no. I mean, you gotta you gotta build to that. And uh, one other thing I wanted to talk about here, another honorable mention was oh shit. And just as quickly as it came to me, it left me. Never mind. Keep moving. Keep moving along. So uh, Matt says, I agree, man. Just animation is on a different level than live action. Yeah, because there's almost no limits. Obviously, there is funding and all these things, but they can have all sorts of mystical, magical, crazy things happen, which is why Genosha um, is possible in you know in cartoon. You can have an entire thirty minutes in Genosha where everyone's a mutant. Right, because right. it wouldn't, it would probably that would cost two hundred million dollars. That that they're thirty minutes alone in live action. So, and we're gonna get deep into the whole episode five. I didn't watch episode six yet. Probably watch it after the stream. But I did want to bring up my other honorable mention since we're talking about MCU projects and building and things of that nature. Uh, the MCU had their streamacon, streamathon, or move, move. They had something, right? They had something, and they showed some trailers. And apparently, they dropped the trailer for the new. Uh, Captain America movie, Captain America Four. I forget Brave what the New name. World. Brave New World, and my dumbass went looking for it, and I clicked on the worst fan made trailer ever. And for a second, I believed it was real because of the state of the MCU. I'm like, what the hell is happening? Right I, I have now? I have 20 issues with YouTube, and like they crack down on the stupidest freaking things, and they, right. they don't regulate on the good on like things that should be regulated. One of my main things they need to regulate on is fake trailers. Yes, yes, stop yes. misleading the people. Yes, and to answer your question, DT Dubs, I was in the hospital. I have been released from the hospital. They gave me a bunch of antibiotics. And they told me not to have fun. <laughs> so, you know, I don't know. I don't know. You're in for a ride tonight. So. <laughs> yeah, so maybe you know, the trailer dropped, man. Uh, and I mean, the trailer didn't drop. There was an exclusive uh, screening of the trailer for Brave New World, Captain America. And the interesting thing about it was I was watching someone else uh, describe the trailer. And from what they described, it sounded like it was going to be, it sounds like it's going to be interesting. I'm not going to say good, but, you know, there's a bunch of shots with Harrison Ford interacting with, you know, the new Captain America and a whole bunch of stuff is happening. I don't know what to make of that yet. And so I visually see it, but the movie is still coming out, right? They, oh yeah. One critique that the, uh, I think it was from Screen Crush that they had about the actual trailer that was released. And the stills they were showing. You remember that ugly ass suit Falcon got to become Captain America in the show? The one oh, name. Like, you know, their problem was they didn't have the budget, but they tried to be comics accurate. Right. And sometimes right, right. that just goes really wrong. It go it went really wrong. And uh, but they changed the suit, right? They ditched that suit and he has now his stealth suit. And it looks pretty looks pretty badass. I gotta be real with you, man. It looks pretty badass, the suit itself. So we'll see where, where this is uh headed. This is supposed to be another 
uh, you know, this is the perfect way for them to build it. It's supposed to be a return to Captain America Winter Soldier. Like they're putting a very heavy. I like, heard them say that people need to be careful when they when they compare their next movie. They're like, I'm going to compare. Like basically, the script is William Shakespeare. Yeah. <laughs> like, before you utter the words Captain America Winter Soldier, you better come correct. Right. right. Because you may have doomed your movie. Right. Out if it's not even gate. remotely as good, they will Out eat you gate. alive. Out the gate. Sorry, folks. I'm just messing with my lighting. I told Mantis yeah. I wouldn't do this on the stream, but he's obsessed, no. guys. He's obsessed. <laughs> Alan, Icebox are in the house. He's like, you're awesome. You're. <laughs> um, glad you're okay, guy. Guy, God bless you. Thank you, DT Dubs. Much love to you, brother. What we up? got what Rogue up, DT? Radio in the house. Oh my, yeah. OMG, Mantis. Well, that's right. I am alive. I've yes. survived the hospital. He made it. He made it. Um, did you guys? Oh, See, Grace. Grace said she heard that they are probably not doing Armor Wars now. Well, I mean, hey, apparently Pedro Pascal is not coming back for season two of The Mandalorian no, or season four. three or season four. Yeah. <laughs> Yo, um, here's are you the thing that really pissed me off about this is that Armor right. Wars originally going to be a series and then they upgraded it to a movie. Right, right, right. And right, if, right, they right. Can't, if they cancel it, I'm right. just going to say it. It's because he's black. I, I agree with that 100%. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh yeah and guys also in other news i want to say is i know this seems like it's interpersonal gossip um grace randolph has blocked me on twitter <laughs> i was wondering if you're gonna bring that up man. oh yeah i'm not i'm not ashamed of it because you know what i wasn't an ass i was a contrarian but i was not an ass and right. in this day and age if you cannot handle being a contrarian that i i don't people just coming at you like having a different opinion then i don't know what what to say, say to you yeah, 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 yeah. But the reason you got blocked, which we don't have to get into, blows my mind, man. Because there's so many things that I think about blocking you on social media for every day. <laughs> right, right, right. After, right. after every stream, I'm like, that's it. This motherfucker is getting blocked. <laughs> exactly. And then this is what this, this is an exercise in learning how to deal with other people's shit. Right. right Pardon my right, French right. guys. Um, and so what I'm saying is this day and age, if a woman in her thirties, um, you know, <laughs> supposedly, supposedly in her thirties, come on, let's get real. We've seen her, um, <laughs> cannot deal with a bunch. And also she's, she's, she's a talking head on the internet that talks right. shit about movies. And here's what I'm saying. She doesn't talk polite about movies. She talks no. shit about movies. Bro, and look so at how she fact- goes into Jessica Chastain. I've said she she she'll attack. Here's what it is: she attacks artists, she attacks actors, she attacks filmmakers, and she talks t- attacks films. She doesn't just say it wasn't my thing. I'm not into it the way you know heavy spoilers would do it, or someone who's respectful, or, or emergency awesome. She rips at them, and then when people uh, uh, clap back, she then feels like she's a victim. Classic victim ex girl mentality. Oh man! Oh man! Um. Yo, oh, Agatha, unfortunately, is going to happen, and I think it's going to be one it of the reasons happening. that the fall of Marvel happens. Agatha is happening, and there's nothing we can do to stop it. But I want to talk a little bit more about Captain America 4. Isaiah, uh, I almost said Isaiah Thomas. Uh, what's my man's name? Um, Black Captain America. Not Falcon, the other one. Isaiah Bradley. Is that oh, his name? Isaiah Bradley, yes. yes yeah. Isaiah Bradley is apparently on some Winter Soldier shit. So some of the stuff that just, that was described in the trailer was him trying to kill the president and then jumping out a window. And I'm here for seeing a fucking over-the-hill old man doing shit. <laughs> yeah, I'm here for that shit, man. Well, I already I already think I know what's going on. I think I already know, and you know that, that would be a spoiler. But knowing who who the villains of the movie are, I already know. I already feel like I know what's going on. All right, so it's the leader, and who else? So it's the leader and several others, but the leader himself has mind control. Oh, right. Well, you and, just basically spoiled the movie. No. Sorry, guys. <laughs> so, <laughs> so one of his powers is to mind control people. So I can, I'm sure he he set, it, set him yeah, up. Pretty- but uh, I also have to say, what kind of anti-black thing is this? Where they're making Isaiah Bradley, the black Captain America, be an assassin and kill a bunch of politicians. Well, I mean. They had his funeral. This is racist! <laughs> they had his funeral in, in Wakanda. So for the first time ever, Wakanda opened its borders 
to honor an American. Right? Um, oh, another honorable mention: the new friggin' um, Black Panther and Captain America game that's going to be coming out I'm on, on board on a uh, Sony and other. Pl- I believe I, it might just be Sony. I could be wrong about that. At any rate, folks, uh, I don't have my notes in front of me. Um, a little bit of a snippet released for that. The gentleman who played the Tiger Welding Madman on uh, The Walking Dead. He is the voice actor and the character, uh, the actual visual actor for Pachaka's father, and they released a snippet. Low light skin. Yo, I was gonna say that. <laughs> oh, okay, yo, oh my god, I was I was saying because him and the, there's also there's also another Wakanda agent who works with him, right? She's an undercover. Right. And I look, both of them, I was like, they're both not only from Africa, but they're from an isolationist country from Africa. So yeah. there isn't a drop of whiteness or Westerner no. in them. None, none. So why none. would they be light skinned? None. I have I have no idea. Did you say why are they light skins? Because that's you know I'll let. No, back but I'm saying in question. Wakanda, <laughs> what, you think they're king? The, the purest blooded motherfucker in all the land is gonna be like, come on, yo, get it together, Marvel. Um, uh, Matt says that Pedro Pascal rumor with Mando is real. Two other scoopers have confirmed it. Is he not gonna do the movie? I, I thought they were making it into a movie or something. Uh, Matt no, says Grace can be a child. I agree. I think she has some. So, so check this out, man. Right, two scoopers confirmed it. Right, but mm-hmm. two scoopers confirmed it off the strength of Grace. I don't know if I'm talking about the two, two uh, same people as Matt Cat over there, but the fact of the matter is, sometimes you just gotta take your L's in life, right? And her L in life is going to be not only did he come back, right. <laughs> Not only is he doing the movie. <laughs> that was a huge one. That was a huge L. Yo, and you know what makes that even funnier than me, man? She blocked you, but she didn't block James Gunn, <laughs> who constantly right. makes sport of Grace Randolph. Whenever she posts something regarding DC property, he's like, who's talking again? Grace. Right. Oh. <laughs> he, he, he takes his time out of his rich person day to trash her that's how much he doesn't like her matt says yeah grace once blocked a guy for saying something about her putting her tv on the floor childish i noticed that that during the pandemic she showed her apartment and right she didn't have a table for her tv she just uh-huh. has it on the floor like an animal <laughs> and i didn't say anything but apparently the kid who did say something got blocked <laughs> <laughs> as he so, should as yeah, he should <laughs> um, he says ezekiel yeah that's right <laughs> that uh bp captain uh yeah black panther captain america game should have been black panther 2 that that would have been an amazing black panther 2 um yeah i wouldn't have been mad at that man uh i don't know if i wanted to see them go back in the history if you're gonna go back in history in the black panther live franchise i would have preferred to seen the first black panther because he actually has a very interesting story minus the whole avengers bc bs who turns out that guy's the original yo, I hate those avengers the, the, yo the 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 uh avengers from negative 1000 bc or something like yeah, that. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's that's wild that's absolutely like wild. thor rides a mammoth or something like that. yeah that, it's it's oh no that's not even thor it's ghost rider it's ghost <laughs> rider. <laughs> whatever it is it's ridiculous it belongs on the flintstones and i'm not buying it more. Uh, uh are you ready to break into the main topics i feel like we've kept it as pg as possible for the we, beginning we of the have, algorithm. i want to finish the rumor mill though Go, go, go for it. Go for it. So um, it looks like Peacemaker is going into production now. And I don't know if you've heard, but James Gunn said on his Twitter that season two of Peacemaker is not going to be canon with season one. He said some things will be canon. Others will not be. You have to tune in to find out. Basically, what he's saying is because, you know, they're changing the DC universe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's gonna have his peacemaker, the new peacemaker season two, in the new universe. Oh. Which means only some of the things won't be true that we've already seen. And I right. have to say, what the fuck? <laughs> Sounds confusing. <laughs> I've already yeah, lost and, interest. And this already this lost. also we could give his woman a uh, a job. Yeah. Uh, so listen, man, I'm cool with whatever James Dunn does james gunn does as long as it always has time for smoke for grace randolph there's only one other person i love seeing getting shit on more than grace randolph in the internet and that's the writers and creators of the netflix witcher series right oh, i will always yes. tune in anytime something bad is happening to those people i'm always gonna tune in i don't I'm mean to blame the victims but honestly these victims deserve it 
<laughs> I mean, it's Justice League cameo at the end of Peacemaker that won't be canon. Yeah, I mean, who, yeah. who knows? Um, then also, I I hope they don't get rid of Vigilante. Oh, that would break uh, my heart, right? Yeah, there. that would that would suck. That would suck. Um, also, Vision Quest is rumored to be starting filming in the summertime. Really? Okay. So I'm they're going to do that. the White Vision story and how he, how he gets his soul back. I was actually hoping for them to allow the Vision to stay the White Vision for a little while. Right. <laughs> it's so funny that you're saying that, the White Vision. I just feel like someone's going to come in at the wrong time of the stream. I'm like, I know you guys were a couple of conservative talking heads. <laughs> right, because the here's, the funny, here's the funny thing. The character is still Vision when that happens uh, to him in the comic books. Yeah. They don't call him the White Vision, but we all know what I'm talking about. <laughs> It's like some third right shit. The white vision. The white vision. <laughs> um, that would be actually be a great plot. Time travel plot. Hitler, go, Hitler comes from the future and he's like, the white vision. I must have him. And he kidnaps him and brings him back to the past. Avengers have to save him. You know, usual. Um, Sydney Sweeney. Everyone is in love with this chick. And trust me, I love blonde Who's girls. That? Um, she's from Euphoria. Um, she recently did like a romantic comedy and then she did some horror movie where she's a nun called okay. Immaculate. Mm -hmm. And she unfortunately is one of the bimbos from Madam Webb. Oh. She's not a horrible actress, but her main thing is that she's hot and she's got a chest. Um, <laughs> she apparently is in the, in the lead to play Black Cat in the next spider-man film booyaka what sony spider-man 4 yeah. or yeah. Uh... why what's wrong <laughs> it's sony man you expect me to get excited for anything the last three spider-man were great movies what are you talking about they had such little involvement that's like saying <laughs> that's like saying your dad that's never been there for you yo it's the same level of involvement it's the same deal okay listen to me listen to me Who's writing it? It's still Kevin Feige is in charge of production, but Sony owns it. It's still wait. The same so we're not. We're, we're not. We're talking about Tom Holland. Tom Spider -Man. Holland. Yes. Tom oh, yeah, Holland's yeah. black cat. I thought I, I, I thought I said the other guy. I thought, no, 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 you yeah. just said Sony. No, I'm, yes, Sony <laughs> has their name on all over it, and Kevin Feige is doing all the work. Okay, then I'm then I'm here for it, man. I'm here for it. If right, it, no, I'm, I'm it, here it was, too, if it, like, if it was brought to you by the team that made Craven. <laughs> Yo, so I th I somehow think Craven is going to flop worse than the Marvels if that's humanly possible. Yeah, because once I don't show up for it, that I was the person that bought the ticket for the Marvels, and they based yeah. themselves. <laughs> off the yeah, that... He's right because I bootlegged it the three times I watched it, all pirated. <laughs> um, good. You got any more rumor mill stuff? Because it's um, actually that's all my rumor mill for there. There, there's a superhero rumor mill. So, how do you feel about the WB? being the first property allegedly to break into the billion dollar club in 2024 the oh you're, you're saying warner brothers yeah warner brothers with dune 2 and right. freaking uh kong x godzilla they're they're on a freaking roll man like, yeah <laughs> um, it kind of shows you it's interesting it's like the war of the movie studios that they're all over the place like right we i never would have thought that marvel would have multiple flaps in a row like no, I, I, that was possible. I know. I never saw that character, that that story arc coming, but it definitely is upon us, and we're living through it. But yeah, Kong, Godzilla, Dune two, which I just watched the other day, by the way, um, had some issues with some of the editing for Dune two. I re I assume that there's going to be a longer version than the theatrical version because I was just like, oh, that was an abrupt cut. But yeah, I enjoyed it, man. I had a really good time watching it. It was as epic as you say. I, I yeah, no, I absolutely, I absolutely do love it. I will tell you this: I tend to not like three-hour movies. I tend to think they should be shorter. Right. Um, but I still, this was still so beautiful. It's like really beautiful, visually beautiful. Thought yeah. Zendaya did a great job. Thought uh, Fake Tom Holland did a great job. I was yeah. really impressed by the whole thing. Fake to be honest. <laughs> um. Uh. Beck says she's not a bad actress at all. Who's that referring to? Uh, so, um, Sydney Sweeney. Oh, you don't have to take okay. your word for it. Um, her boobs are amazing, says Matt. Nice. Kellen says, "Yes, yeah, she would be a great Felicia Hardy. Absolutely, she would." Um, I still haven't watched Madam Web. <laughs> did you watch it? <laughs> I did. Once again, I shouldn't keep admitting this. 
Say the it again. The fans are going to be at my door, and they're going to be like, piracy <laughs> is a crime. Uh, but uh, let me tell you, I didn't use the movie theaters or traditional means to view it. <laughs> Alternative streaming methods. And even then, I regretted it. I wanted my I wanted my two hours back. Uh, MX MP M3 says over in uh Instagram that it was not worth watching. Yeah, I, I can watch it right now on someone's Plex server for free. And I every time I turn it on, I'm like, not today, <laughs> not today, bro. It's, it's basically half by once you hit the halfway mark and you're like, is anyone gonna turn into a superhero? What's happening? And you realize <laughs> it's not gonna happen, it's over. Oh, well, thank you for saving time for me. All right, There's that's a lot of Wait, real quick. There's a lot of people who are like, um, Peter's parents aren't in it, aren't in a lot. They are in it. They're in it too much because they're completely normal people who are just like, hey, want to hang out? And she's like, yeah, sure. And she keeps going to their house for some reason, even though she doesn't really know them. <laughs> and they just keep having pregnant Peter Parker's mom in it, even though she has nothing to do with the story. <laughs> and they just jammed her in there. Like, it's like you're watching a movie about peter's mom's friend <laughs> so agatha Hart. <laughs> it's basically agatha um agatha the movie right um, but yeah what are our serious topics today forget more so, some people call him infamous other people call him the heisman we simply know him as the juice orenthal james <laughs> it's funny that the weird name went first right you couldn't have used that as the middle name oj has passed and went on and left the chat no longer with us oj simpson so much to unpack there right rest so, in peace brother rest in peace so let's talk about the oj simpson thing for a second here man now you remember when that documentary came out about the entire trial and everyone tuned back in and it was the same type of fervor that you you know you experienced when the trial was happening when we were kids i was in grade school i believe when that shit happened and i got a great memory of that here's the amazing thing about that man lapd fumbled the bag and for all the people who were wildly upset and i mean white people you should really be mad at the LAPD. And in fact, you should be mad at the system that prioritizes money and fame. Don't be mad at Orenthal, right? OJ just proved categorically that if you have money, you got freedom. When you have a lawyer, an attorney like Johnny Cochran, I don't know how much you know about Johnny Cochran's backstory, but he's been fighting him. He's a hero. He'd been fighting the system for years. Yeah. And this was his opportunity not to defend OJ, but to put the system on trial. And that's another thing I got to say. Their star officer leading the thing was a notorious racist <laughs> who, had, who had framed and beaten other black suspects and had a long history of that. Now, a lot of people could say, well, he doesn't necessarily did it this time. But right, what, yeah. don't have cops on the force who are like that if right. you want juries to believe them. Right, right. Lil Garfield, welcome in, brother. Angel Age, welcome in. You know, you, you know what the crazy thing was? I remember Chris Rock skit, man. He was like, I don't know why white people are so upset. He was like, if it was Jerry Seinfeld that was on trial for <laughs> double homicide and the only person to <laughs> the person to <laughs> be the police officer was a member of the Nation of Islam, you don't think Jerry Seinfeld would have Of course. <laughs> people would call foul nonstop, yo. And that is a, actually you know what's funny we're all laughing at it. it's all joke it's right. that is the perfect analogy right right, right uh, well, now right. here's what i'm saying even before the racist cop is shown if jerry seinfeld was accused of these things right. I'm, I'm sorry guys i honestly do be believe that the white nation would love him would be like on his side and like he has to be framed poor jerry <laughs> you, you know um uh, what does he know about murder he doesn't have he doesn't have a violent bone in his body <laughs> right right, right. You know, just... uh, the only person that would be mad would be a young kanye um uh. so in, reg in regard to this whole situation it it just it it's amazing to me right because now that oj has passed we got caitlin jenner right coming out and saying good riddance and caitlin jenner caught some smoke on social media we're gonna have to go through this whole thing man so I don't know if you're aware of this. I'm going to use a dead name here. 
only because it was the name used in the press when this incident right, happened. Right, I'm totally fine with that. Bruce Jenner, prior to becoming Caitlyn Jenner, got into a horrific car crash that cost some people their life. Now, I am not blaming Caitlyn or trying to make Caitlyn accountable for this vehicle, vehicular, you know, incident there. But at the same time, it's interesting to me that Caitlyn Jenner would speak on this subject at all because shut the fuck up, right? Shut the fuck up. And this is what I would offer as your head of media, right? The person that handled all this shit for you. I would always send my clients a text message that says, shut the fuck up. Shut say the nothing. fuck up. Say, say nothing. nothing. Right. You are in too fragile a ground in this climate today where it doesn't matter what factually may be correct or even in your opinion may be correct, which a lot of people would agree with. You are not in a position to say anything about this because so many people spammed Caitlyn Jenner with links to the article in regards to the death of these people on the highway that it was outrageous that bruce got away with scott clean because they're rich and 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 all the and they're a sports star and stuff right and people were just like oh you know they're like oh it's just someone having a bad day those four lives are, are you know whatever right 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 um and so it's true well that that's certainly one way to look at it um another way and i don't think people i don't people, people hate it when i say this as soon as they start laughing and like good right and good right and oj uh -huh. i'm like he wasn't convicted of anything yeah okay and now we get to the now we get to the I'm that guy later. i'm that guy at that party who's annoying every one of you <laughs> it's like he wasn't convicted of anything bro wait wait no no wait go back See, to well, matt's comment wait go back to max's comment matt we no, you shouldn't be mad at OJ because OJ OJ was acquitted of murder. Yeah, who are you going to be mad at? Are you going to be mad at the system that failed to be able to secure the prosecution? Who are you mad at exactly? Well, here's the thing. I, obviously, I get mad at all sorts of crazy things, so I invite you all right. to be mad at whatever you want. Feel free, you know, it's free country. Be be mad, but I would just simply say my argument is that he was not convicted of murder and so do any of us really know we think we know we weren't there you, right you know what i mean like well uh, to uh no i'm not scared to say it so here's the thing right i have I've, i have friends in so many different circles right and different people in different walks of life and things like that and one common thread amongst my more conservative friends is well we just don't know what happened we, we can't judge jump to judgment and then when I bring this situation up, the same pragmatic, logical approach to life that they have been trying to beat me over the head with. Well, I'm like, were you upset when OJ was acquitted? Of course I was upset. It was a clear misjudgment. Right, right. But we don't know. You you have no evidence. You have no evidence that he did any of these crimes. <laughs> Matt says Jerry Seinfeld is a treasure. He <laughs> he's probably a, mur a murderer though. <laughs> Stop it! I'm mad at all of it. Yeah, um, you know, be be mad. Go cra Go crazy. Have your have your righteousness. I'm totally into it. Um, but I, you know, I would say that like we don't we don't know. And th you know, there is a very prominent conspiracy theory that his oh, son was the murderer. There's that one, and, and he was covering for, for him. There's that one. That's the most prominent one. And here's one for the YouTube algorithms and for X. I am not making this claim. This is conjecture and one of the more undercover rumors. But apparently, with a quick Google search, you can also be exposed to this rumor that the young man who was slain with Nicole Brown Simpson. And again, I'm saying this is a rumor, not That's fact, true. and I'm not presenting it as fact, had some dealings with drug dealers. And it was a tab that must be paid. And right. the, he was like a waiter or something. Who, yeah, yeah. And the, the whole OJ should. is going to handle it thing just kind of got old. So that's one of the rumors that's out there, right? <laughs> that's one right. of the rumors that's and, out and there. So you know, we we won't know. However, I will tell you this: like, if OJ was alive, and then people are like, "Oh well, if he's so innocent, go hang out with him, become buddy buddy with him," I would pass on that just in case. <laughs> but still, he isn't convicted. I'd be like, he should be free. I wouldn't yeah. invite him out to dinner. But he yeah. should be free. Now, here's Unless what I'm not victim, right? Unless they find. Here's what I'm not doing, man. I'm not trying to pass OJ off as some civil rights hero, right? I don't know why black people were so excited when OJ won. 
I mean, I do, but I I don't know why for OJ. OJ had given up on any level of brotherhood or kinship with black folk many moons ago. He was just OJ as he referred. Remember, Jay-Z talked about it in his song, right? And we all trust Jay-Z. He, he's someone that can speak on popular culture and you can trust his opinion. OJ was not the hero of the people, right? But what happened was, I could see Mads is squirming in his chair over there. What happened was that we got to see the system get put on trial. Now, I do not wish death, or nor do I condone the murders of Nicole Brown uh, Simpson and that young man that passed. I, you know, I wish their families all the peace in the world that can come after such a tragic loss. Right? They deserve justice. Right. And to obtain justice, that would assume that the system works towards justice. And here we have a glaring representation of how the system does not, in fact, serve justice. Right. at all and that's where my case lie now if you want to debate me on this just remember the debate that i'm going to be having with you is does your argument stand up to your own scrutiny because if you're looking at this as a miscarriage of justice allow me to present 20 other things that have happened that are very similar to the oj simpson trial that didn't nail get as near press yeah, this, yeah. Here's what I'm saying. When we're talking about Frank Castling somebody, and so for those who know what that reference is, uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> here's what I'm saying. They didn't have enough evidence to convict OJ. But let's say they're like, Mantis, don't you believe in like street justice and all this stuff and Frank Castling? I believe you should be able to Frank Castle. In examples of like, there are constant criminals who are clearly guilty. It's determined by the court that they are guilty and they get off because of a loophole. Like for instance, do you remember that kid who was a really wealthy kid and he found a drunk, passed out girl behind a dumpster and he assaulted her and then he got caught yes. by some strangers, some people walking by yes. and the judge said he is clearly guilty, but I'm giving him time served because he's young and naive and I don't want to ruin his future. Mm -hmm. Horrible miscarriage. Things like that, you deserve yeah. a Frank Castle. Oh, uh, yeah. I guess but so. I'm saying in this particular case, they couldn't even prove the case. Um, and plus, OJ, even as an old man, he was a big guy. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you run up on him. He might you might find out some things about OJ. You run up on him. All I'm saying is Orenthal is no longer with us, man. He has passed. Obviously, he did time in prison behind running. You know, OJ went gangster there for a little while. I don't know if y'all know this. Someone stole a bunch of memorabilia shit from him. OJ got the homies together. They ran up on some people, ran in the house and got some stuff back. Matt, man, you know? Matt says I can't debate with only 250 characters. Matt, you want you want to come on in here? <laughs> You you want to jump on stream with us? <laughs> you can you can come up, Matt. You can come uh, yeah. up. <laughs> I I would I would love love to. Um, you know, but here's here's another thing we need to factor in. And so this isn't about his guilt or whatever. This is just a concept of him. Do you think OJ is in hell? Well, I am not God, and I I I don't pass judgment. I don't know. I don't know. But I'll say this. <laughs> oj in general his what he did and all right. that whole thing changed particularly entertainment uh -huh. huge he created people's obsession with reality tv right. he created people's obsession with true crime right and you know not only that for tauruses the sales tripled because because he ran around with oh, i'm sorry broncos broncos his right. bronco his whole thing with the bronco yeah, he yeah, made yeah. the Bronco triple in sales. Yeah, he did. And so basically, he's a trendset. So you're saying he's an American hero? He is, and I'll tell you why. He's, <laughs> an, American he's, the, he's an American hero for the same reason Donald Trump is an American hero. Oh and snap! You went there. Same way that our founders are. Yeah. And I'm going to be straight, straight up with it. Americans have a love affair with criminals. It's true, man. It's very true. That's why even when you're watching fictional movies, it's always like the good guys, like he's rough around the edges and he's kind of a criminal. Look at things like true romance or other things. We love stories of bank robbers and other people who like scam people. We love con men tales yeah. because our founders were con men, right? We root for the bad guy. Then and, turn the movie off when the bad guy died. Yeah. And, I, I, <laughs> yes, and I'm not saying that I'm not, this isn't some anti-American rant. I love America, but I'm just saying that is a staple of America. That we kind of like these kind of crooked guys, and they're like, right. I like they, I like him because he's crooked. Well, let me give you a perfect example of that, man. John Gotti. You know who John Gotti is? Yeah. Okay. So the Teflon Don celebrated 
in the papers every time this murderous bastard beat a charge anytime they couldn't you would laugh in the streets they'd be like yeah, oh, he, got, they, he got they, away with it again and why would they do that because in some level the little guy or the little woman or little person whatever you identify as right they relate to someone getting over on the system we yeah. completely abandon our moral compass and everyone does it everyone does it you look at a situation and you're like oh the system got it with this one why do you think so many people you brought him up supported donald trump man the the really shit that psychopath ever said was i enjoy the same tax breaks that your friends do hillary right <laughs> you're like holy and, shit and, and people like, it, like that trying to, try to stop it and <laughs> And, uh, you know, I'm obviously, you know, we're not switching gears. We're staying on OJ. But um, the, the whole thing is like that is why as Trump gets more trials against him, it's only making him more popular. Absolutely. Because people want to stick it to the man. So over on uh, Instagram, MX says in regards to OJ giving up uh, more accolades, think why true crime is even popular, even popular as a genre category. It's true, man. True crime was birth. Well, not birth with the OJ trial, but it definitely took on a new shape and form with the OJ trial, I would say. Yeah. Uh oh, uh -oh. what's that sound? What are you doing over there? What are you doing? Nothing strange. <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. I'm really wondering if, if Mad Cat wants to jump on stream. Talk to us. <laughs> the crazy thing about it is, man, um, so like I said, I was in grade school. I think when the decision came down, we actually had just moved to Chicago. But I remember, just remember that they covered. I remember the day in the seventh grade when they took OJ's picture off the Hall of Fame in IS44 in Manhattan, the school I went to. I they, took, they took his picture right down, bro. Also, they took a few other people's pictures down. Uh, we can't get into that for, you know, the frivolous. Just insane. saying, Bill Cosby, <laughs> my hero. <laughs> no, that's Wait. Just Bill Cosby. Uh, hero because of comedy. <laughs> Not for any other reason. Hero because of comedy. I can't um, remember. I can't remember the dude's name, man, but wow. he, he passed I, away from uh, AIDS and he was a tennis player. And oh! They yeah, they took his they took his picture down in my school too. You know what I'm talking about? It's is it Ash something Ash? I I can't remember, man. <laughs> well, yo, I remember. So check this out: the day the OJ verdict was coming out, right? I remember I was a little kid and I was in art school. I was in art, you know, art class, and I'm doing it. And in my little corner, I said, "OJ's only crime." And obviously, I'm a little kid, just re re you know, just reciting shit that I had heard before. I didn't right, have right, a true right. opinion. I said, OJ's only crime is being a black man in a white America. And I said, I hope if he's found gu guilty, there are riots. And my teacher heard this and she said, what did you say? And I repeated it proudly because I was like, fuck you, bitch, like in my head. She lectured me. She pulled me out. She was lecturing me. She was giving me all the shit. And she said, everyone stop drawing. Right. She says, no one's allowed to keep drawing until Roy apologizes to the class. She made me stand in front of the class and apologize for having that thought. Oh, man, if that should happen today, you'd be a millionaire. Oh, yeah. You'd be all over oh, yeah. the news, man. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, let me ask you a question. If the OJ trial happens today, does it get stuck in the woke category or... What oh yeah, people would be like, "Well, he's he's black, so he's a, he's guilt, you know, he's he's a victim." Right, right, right. Actually, right. you know what's funny? Somebody was analyzing this, and I remember it was not it was not CNN. It was a CNN guest, and Mark Dice pointed this out. There's a CNN guest who pointed out that she said the reason why young black people associate with OJ is because he killed two white people. Ooh, is that is that the most ignorant shit you've ever seen in your life? Not the most ignorant, but you know, it's very comical. Eddie says, still a master at this craft, Mantis. LOL. <laughs> In regards to you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Eddie. Thank you. Mantis, I can't jump on. I'm at work. I wouldn't have enough time. Okay. No, I dig it. Um, yeah, his name is Arthur, Arthur Ashe. Arthur Ashe. There yeah, right. that's how liberal my school was. They took down Arthur Ashe's picture for being a player. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So you know what? I think that tonight is a very interesting thing about tolerance yeah. of other people's politics or like uh -huh. what we consider politics. That's a good thing. I like. We that. have different. <laughs> we have different opinions and different experiences. And right. Like so, when I see Arthur Arthur Ashe or the memory of him, I'm like, oh, he was a ladies' man. Right. Right. And then other people will see something else. You don't remember much about Arthur Ashe, do you? Not much. <laughs> 
Um, or or what, what a, you know, you, you lose some to some people, OJ's a hero who stuck it to the LAPD, right? Right, and yeah. uh, to others, he's a white woman slayer. Um, I don't know, it's all it's all crazy, but I will say he has changed the culture, and I mean, multiple cultures in right. so many different ways for what he did. Right. And uh, he's just he's one of those guys, he was loved. He was loved as a football player, mostly he played on the Bills right. uh, for most of his career. And then he was loved as an actor. Yeah. Do you remember as an actor? When I was a kid, I remember seeing him. In the oh, yeah. Gun. Airplane, Naked Gun, all those things. Man. His his uh, getting harmed scenes and Naked Gun are the thing of, like, it's hysterical. Classic. classic hysterical. Classic. Um, um, today, but by today's standards, man. People were still extremely upset with feeling that OJ got away with murder, right? Actually, I forgot this guy's name, Costa, one of the commentators that he used to do work with back on the, back in the day, actually went on uh, Good Day New York or Good Morning America, one of those stupid ass shows, man. And he's talking to them and he just proclaimed outright, he's like, you know, OJ did this. Two things can be true at the same time. And I thought this was an interesting take. Not mad at him for saying it. He was like, two things can be correct at the same time. OJ, could have killed them and i believe that he did that's a direct quote and then he said it can also be true that african americans up until that point until this point he said this not i receive poor treatment in the legal system those things can both be true at the same time right and ju ju just as like oj could be guilty but the lapd could be filled with racists who are corrupt all the time you don't even have to say could. All you got to do is look up Rampart Division. Don't say yeah. could. Don't make it a hypothetical. Right. If you've ever lived in L.A. and had any interaction with any police, not saying that they're all like this, right. but, bro, <laughs> L.A. set the goal. Well, L.A. and New York in the 80s. Cops in the 80s in New York, that was that good. That, that mm, was a racist. sweet spot of being a cop. You could do what if you were into blood and beating people, you could do whatever you wanted. You could come home with duffel bags full of money. You get that summer home. Right, 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 it's right. It's all right. good. Um, I wonder, um, is this... Is... <laughs> um, so trial, trials and things happening with trials. Um, are we ready to pivot over to our boy Trump? I guess so. Let's do it, man. So recently, um, you know, they started this New York thing, a uh, New York trial of paying off stormy daniels now paying off the chick that you banged so that your wife doesn't find out i don't see how that's a crime in any way but okay <laughs> let's, let's pretend for a second it is new york state they are now trying to find jury members right do you think in, in this new york city mind you do mm. you think they're going to actually find 12 people who will totally convict or do you think they're going to have a few people who are just like secret trumpsters I think it's going to be a hung jury, but that's not what he's being put on trial for. <laughs> I love how you painted that. <laughs> he's being on. He's being put on trial for it, lying about it as a public official <laughs> about lying about it. If he had just came out and said, "I paid that bitch," <laughs> I just have to say this: Bill Clinton. Bill Clinton. I don't it. disagree with you. I right. do not disagree with you, man. Poor well, Bill, man. He's slipping. Right. Remember when last time we saw him when uh, Hillary was running for president and she he's up on stage with her and they like had balloons falling from the top and Bill's just obviously reaching for what looks like boobs to him. He's yeah. like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, can they find 12 jurors that are willing to convict? I think so. I think in New York City, for sure, they can find 12 liberal jurors that are willing to convict Donald Trump. Easy. That's Manhattan. Now, let's say if they go somewhere like Staten Island, Long Island, they're going to be hard-pressed, man. He's very popular. In those Did two you places. see him go to the bodega? Who? Trump? Yeah, because, so the, here's what it is. The liberal media won't cover it, but other people are covering it. Uh, you know, oh, alternative media. What do you get, a chopped cheese? So he went, he, so check this out. Um, Don't tell me he got a chopped cheese for real. No, no, he didn't. I, I really wish he would. I, th I wish he had walked out with a chopped cheese and a quart of water, right? But Instead, he, what it was is that he was invited there by other bodega owners, and the right. bodega that he particularly went to was owned by that Dominican man who fended off two guys robbing him. Mm. He ends up killing one of them, and they charge him yes. with murder. I remember this. For yes. protecting his thing and all this thing. Eventually, they dropped the case against him, and this poor guy moved away. He sold the bodega, and he went back to DR. He was like, 
he's like f this new york america crap right right but trump was invited there by other bodega owners who say they're the, how, how are we going to stop crime he showed up but guess who else showed up who's that T crowds and crowds of children apparently i don't know why they're all kids uh, in this thing and they're all like we love you trump we love you trump <laughs> i'm deadly serious right now how much did they pay those little kids <laughs> i'm wondering i'm wondering um what, what do you make of that what do you um i mean it's it's political grandstanding like for sure man uh in regards to him going to the bodega at all it's a brilliant move right attaching yourself to such a heart a heart aching story man because if you think about the humanity portion of that being prosecuted for defending your property defending your life right and then because the assailants one of them dies in the you know during the during the course of that now you're painted out to be the bad guy and that's where the entire social i hate saying it this way but the social justice argument becomes insane to me right where it's like bro i have a right to defend my property i have the right to defend my life man if you die during the course of trying to take those two things away from me like legitimately violently trying to take those things away from me makes no sense so trump attaching himself to that situation is only going to embolden people who are like already hardcore trump supporters because it's like look look at him stand in solidarity with this guy now in him standing in solidarity with him do i believe that in any way that this is an altruistic approach from trump that he really gives a shit about this guy trump was probably like get this filthy mexican away from me and they keep telling him they're like no he's dominican he's like get this peruvian away from me he's like no he's dominican <laughs> yo you have to exercise your um connection or belief that any politician ever in right. the history of america has ever had an altruistic motivation yeah. everyone from aoc to you know that mummy that old mummy lady nancy pelosi, pelosi the vampire all of them are self-serving animals who right. you know you know what i mean like they'd slip their mama's their mama for like a, a vote yeah uh, no i'm not I'm, I'm not arguing against it i know you, and i know you know that i'm not i'm just saying it is a masterful move to attach himself to that because again why do people support him on top of all the bravado you know, being not a, being unashamed to say whatever thought comes to his feeble mind, it's because he does stuff like this, right? Let's not forget that his whole campaign has basically this time around been just enough, right? He's not out there like he was the first time around, and he's doing it brilliantly. I just have to say that you hate Trump, but he's doing a brilliant job of just like he ran through the Republican primaries. Like, I don't have to show up for debates. Let's not pretend yeah, you know, like honest, I need to do was... this. That was one of the gr most alpha moves ever made. <laughs> He's like, I'm He's not going to win up, by not showing up at all. Exactly. He's like, why do I need to compete with you guys? We all know where this is going. And now the interesting thing is going to be watching him. I'm really fearful of this. Him and Joe Biden on a stage debating each other again. It's bad for the world. I want to see it. <laughs> why? Man? I want to see you know, you know what it is? Because I miss watching Trump rip somebody apart. And I want I want to see him take take old man biden apart because here's what i'm saying old man biden may have done enough cocaine the night of his address to right. get through it <laughs> but he's not fast enough to keep up with the debate as we've seen mm. in in the past when he tries to go to debates he doesn't he doesn't know how to keep up with the snappiness of it trump however he's like a whirling dervish <laughs> right so yo i want to say and another thing is i love i love watching trump troll and insult people i love watching right, right, him yeah make people cry like he, he he made some of the republicans in 2016 cry because of the hurtful shit he said in a debate to all my red pillars out there man you know who y'all should start making videos about stop making videos about you know uh women on the internet make videos about ted cruz you want to talk about a beta male ted cruz allowed another man to straight out disrespect his oh wife God. on the public stage and then turned around and endorsed him now i know you can just say steve you don't understand the political theater no, i'm like you no. do the way you're speaking i think you do you do all too well <laughs> you know the fact that trump disrespected this man shows you that you cannot shake ted he Cruz's disrespected his father and his wife 
and well. he ends up endorsing him. And trust me, everyone, I don't care how he's like, it's political. He, everyone lost total respect for him at this point, even his father. Oh, you know what the hardest L I've ever seen Trump take, man? What is this silver haired bastard's name? Uh, God rest his soul. Uh, former war hero was captured. His daughter was on the view for a little while. What is this guy's name? Um, oh, ran against Obama. McCain. McCain. What a great F you before you transition to the hereafter. <laughs> like everyone's invited, everyone can speak except for the sitting president, right? right. And I it was so great to watch uh OAM o o n and like Fox News cover this, and they're just like, This is a slight, and it shows you that he wasn't a true American. I'm like, Or did McCain truly understand politics? He's like, That's a good way of going out. That is <laughs> on his deathbed, the troll, the biggest troll ever. I'm not looking forward to the debate between uh trump and biden because i know it's just i don't i don't really care for the antics man i don't you know watching him disrespect ted cruz was brutal but i don't care man I, I'm, I'm i'm in such a bad place when it comes to what this presidential election is gonna look like bro here's, here's what i'm saying uh, the idea that we're gonna elect someone that we like that most people like is has been long gone for many years okay for me right wouldn't you agree there's like there, you haven't really liked a candidate in forever. I assume you weren't a Hillary supporter. No, 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 no. I did not support that woman. I mean, even though she did pull hot sauce out, right? And for some reason, oh, I was supposed right. to be emotionally attached to that yeah. shit. Yeah, now that bitch knows what's going on. <laughs> now she's like when Biden dead. said, "If you don't vote for me, you ain't black." Amazing okay, soundbite. Amazing soundbite, yeah. man. Still holds up against the test of time. Uh, over on uh, IG, <laughs> MX says Brandon Herra, Herrera for Congress. Go look up a picture of Brendan, <laughs> Brendan Herrera, and it's uh, you'll see why he said that. It's amazing stuff. Um, in regards to Stormy Daniels, man, is Stormy Daniels the new face of the left? <laughs> does she, does no, she... she's not because she's not trans. Oh, so, so she is not. Um... I mean, but she fits the bill, right? She is a uh, sex worker. She's a liberated right. woman. She's a sex worker. She's a liberal, but she's too blonde for them. Um, they're 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 gonna want someone nastier, uglier, someone with blue hair, probably short right. short hair. Um, you know, so, some 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 thing without tits. You know who I think is going to be a constant problem for Trump? His old uh, fixer, his old attorney. Now, that's a guy that poses real problems because no matter how you cut it, no matter for all you hardcore Trump fans, the guy does know the inner workings of everything that's happened. The only thing working against him is that nobody's listening, right? No, nobody's like, this guy actually knows how corrupt he is and no one's listening to him at all. He's like, you know, you don't understand. He eats puppies. And they're like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> Well, that's exactly what happened with uh, Chris Christie. Chris Christie oh, yeah. during the debate was con every word out of Chris Christie's mouth during the debate season was dis Trump, dis Trump, dis Trump. After a while, he looked like a hurt girlfriend, right? Yeah. Ex girlfriend. Yeah. She's just like, he broke up with me and now I'm just going to talk shit. He is such a narcissist. And blah, 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 blah. And this, that, and the other thing. And it's like, shut up, fat man. And I can say that because I'm a fat. There you but, go. Um, it's, it's, it's a crazy season. The final thing I want to ask about Trump is what are your thoughts about the fact that the judge said he wasn't allowed to take the day off from court to go see his son graduate high school? I mean, that doesn't surprise me. If you've ever had any dealings with the legal system there, you know, they deny people the opportunity to go bury their parents during a, you know, a court process. So not surprising to me at all. Eh, you know, that kid's rich, man. He ain't missing shit. <laughs> you think he wants his dad around for real? He don't want his father around. <laughs> Here's what I'm saying. We all know that's the truth. Who the fuck wants their dad at their high school graduation? I want to get drunk and go hang out with some people, my, my friends, right? But of course, your dad's going to drag it down. However... The point is, they should realize the optics of this are bad. The Democrats are going to look really bad the oh. fact that, that they're denying him this. This is like I, I see the problem. You don't seem to understand that the Democrats are in the same. They're taking you know their their cues from the MCU. Everyone's telling them what's bad, and they're like, no. We're still going to make Eternals 2. <laughs> <laughs> Eternals 2, go ahead. Green lights, female silver surfer, full speed ahead. Uh, yo, another Grace Randolph jab, I got to say, is yeah. she made disses about the silver surfer. And she's like, as if anyone knows or cares who the silver surfer is. 
He is a beloved fucking character. What are you talking about? Wait, wait, wait. Say it again. What? Grace Randolph said that we should, everyone should calm down about it being gender swamp because she's like, it's not like anyone reads Silver Surfer. I mean, who, who, I, she's like, I would like to see the Silver Surfer fans come forward. I, there aren't any. That is the totally out of it perception because Silver Surfer, I'd say he's one of the top dogs of Marvel. I mean, I don't know what his comics gross man, but I would know that he's one of the most popular known characters in the comic zeitgeist. And I would disagree with her fundamentally because it's just a stupid argument. I hate this response of why are you so upset? Let me see who really are the fans, bro. You know that this character is par and parcel to the Fantastic Four lore, right? right. It's same thing with friggin' Namor, man. Like I, I, I just gotta, I just gotta speak on this for a second, man. The Namor swamp, it, it got, it, it got, they got away with it because we would never, we, you know, we never really got a nationality for Namor. We all assumed he was Japanese when we were kids, right. and, then you know, like <laughs> and then you realize, like, oh, he wouldn't have been fighting against the access of evil <laughs> back in the day. Oh right, right, I never thought about that. <laughs> but with the whole Silver Surfer thing, that. Just say I'm staying on code, Grace. That's all you got to do. Say my argument is I'm staying on code. I believe in gender swapping and race swapping characters, and I don't think this is a big deal. And I think you're all being babies. But remember, Grace Randolph, is all, she's also famous for saying, if you don't go out and support these characters, it's your fault. I don't know if you're up to speed on this. She made an argument a few years back in regards to LGBTQ inclusion and race swapping where it is up to the fans who demand this to now go out and support the property and we talked about that right, here I would, on yeah, I, agree with that. I would totally agree with that because where so are these fans once they demand it they see don't what happens when, see what happens when you turn the argument back on itself so if the movie flops don't make it about people being bigots and racist or misogynist or any of those things no let's make it about what it really is about why didn't all these women quote unquote, I'd like to see them step forward who wanted to gender swap Silver Surfer. Why the fuck didn't they buy tickets to it? Right. Why didn't women <laughs> show up for the Marvels? That's that's the biggest one thing. Even the breakdown of the Marvels is it's like 70% or more were males who went. So e yeah. not only did it flop, it men didn't even make it flop. Women made it flop. Yeah, and it had nothing to do with toxic men in the chat. It didn't have anything to do with men on mics, you know, making podcasts about it. Where were the women fans? Okay, and this is not a shot, man. And, uh, you know, I'll say it on Instagram. I have no problem saying this, man. Where were the black women that you allege were screaming for this? Where were the women of Arabic or Middle Eastern descent screaming for Kamala, Kamala Khan? Right, right. Where was the support there? And this is why Grace Randolph's argument doesn't make any sense. So because we can't produce a billion Silver Surfer fans, who want Silver Surfer to remain a male, then if this movie flops, you have to keep that same energy, that same argumentation. Where were the female fans? I don't know why y'all still listen to her. Shout out to her for being one of the OGs on YouTube, right? But as far as she it goes as a journalist, I don't know this woman, and she, could, she wouldn't know me or lend me a dollar if I was dying from hunger. She is not... Well, she's a rich East Sider, so there's no way she'd fucking give you anything. Oh, yeah, no, she would think i was mugging her while screaming liberal principles as i'm walking down the street but <laughs> she is not relevant in regards to the landscape of popular media and critiquing and i, I, agree. I, hate talking about I hate you know i hate what oh no I, i'm not I'm, I'm talking about the universal you man like you know how it used to come at me in regards to campia and then i didn't jump i jumped off the campia train in regards to the whole fallout with him and rob they seem to be back on you know, good grounds now, but it was just like, man, I don't want my critiquers to come with so much drama. drama yeah, and on, she's man. filled, she's filled with the drama, man. Bad takes. Just admit it. The Pedro thing. Just admit it, woman. <laughs> just, yeah, just admit it. <laughs> um, uh, Matt says Trump should go to his son's graduation anyway. He'll get thrown in jail and he'll have every parent on his side. That is Honestly, really, that's Matt, I agree with you. He should go to his son's thing, but I do not think he's going to get thrown in jail. And then we'll have yet another example. And this is what the liberals are banking on, Matt. Another example of how power gets to slide. And then to that, I would say, hey, 
Well, OJ just enjoyed some of that same power. So we can't, yeah. Yo, imagine, <laughs> oh, yo, you know what would be, you know be golden? You know what really helped Trump's campaign? If he what? went anyway and he got arrested at the graduation. Oh, that would if be amazing. New York City police officers came into a graduation and tore him away from his son's graduation. That would, that would be amazing. amazing. Oh, my Could God. You imagine hard to think him, he hurts his hip trying to run from the police. Oh, that would be dope. <laughs> Here for yeah. it. <laughs> Yo, um, Matt says, yeah, Grace is tarted. Silver Surfer is my favorite Marvel character. There we go. I remember him, when I was a kid, he was definitely one up there with my. With oh, that's my interesting, favorite. Matt. I, I don't know if Stanley said that, but I wouldn't be surprised, man. And um, did I ever tell you guys a story about when we ran into Stan Lee in uh, L.A.? Like when I say ran into, like I was literally walking with my wife and my my firstborn, and we're walking down. I'm sorry, let's just say walking up the boulevard in West Hollywood, and he was coming out of this very famous, exclusive kind of place where rich people go to get massages, drink tea, that type of shit. Happy he, endings. Yeah, all that Thank stuff. <laughs> and he looked so old. He was so old, but he definitely looked like he knew where he was. So he looked like he was having a good time. He was he better than Biden. There we go. <laughs> All right, what, what do we got next, man? You know, getting off Trump and Grace Randolph's hair. Oh, wait. Oh, no, I thought you were going to say more like he was getting, you know, he hugged your son and, and then. No, I would front kick that old man if he tried to touch my child. <laughs> um, Wait, real quick, before we leave the Trump thing, you know what is going to work in his favor? Not having the dead weight of Mike Pence this time around. Oh, yes. I'm sorry. I, who, to say I wonder it. who he's going to have um as his running mate. It's, it's interesting. I don't know. I don't know if anyone wants to jump on that bandwagon with him, but I'm, I'm waiting patiently to see who he's going to announce for sure. What the hell are you reading? I'm trying to figure out. Um, uh, Matt Cat asked me to look up who he said his favorite character was. Uh, okay, 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 okay. okay. Uh, just looked it up. Stanley said, "Oh, I, re I misread that. Yep, just looked it up." Stanley said, "Silver Surfer was his favorite." Um, guys, wait, wait. Can we jump back to? to x-men 97 for a second of course There's um no rules in this podcast x-men 97 is it woke uh you know what's <laughs> <laughs> i do not here's what it is <laughs> here's x-men in general modern x-men since probably like the mid 80s has been woke it's always been woke, right? You it's a woke, it's a woke property. It's woke it's you, property. Stop, you stop this inconsistent drivel. <laughs> well, oh, you don't believe that? Wait, wait. So you're saying that X Men has always been woke? Which, on some which level, on some level, yeah, it's always been woke. On um, which which version of woke are you talking about? Are you talking about woke that like as it's used by conservatives? Are you talking about woke this, the way black people use it? No, not the way. I, I, I nowadays I don't use it the way black people use it because like. Nobody uses it like that. I wish we could use it. The word has been co-opted by YouTubers and angry people, right? So what I mean by woke is I mean like, you know, they're all like, we'll make sure you have a lot of character uh, women and a lot of gays and a, a okay, lot of so, diversity. And, you know, so we're, we're always looking and they're like, we need a mutant within a wheelchair and all this shit, right? Um, <laughs> that has always been, as long as I've been a fan, part of X-Men. Right right, 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 and that type of woke. Um, so that's what it is, and I think that people are complaining that it, it's X Men ninety seven is woke. They're just looking at X Men. That's just yeah. how X Men is. So I'm not even going to put a negative connotation on it. X Men has always had an undertone of talking about these issues. For God's sakes, we're talking about mutants that were persecuted. Right. I just want to know: Are the anti woke people on YouTube making videos about X Men ninety seven? So you know what I love is that. <laughs> Like, so my favorite is, you know, my man Tyrone Magnus, who says, and he said this both about this and Fallout. Have you seen Fallout yet? No, you said it was amazing. I want to check it out. I though. love it. And he points out that he said both items. He's like, they're both woke, but they're both good. And like, he, goes, <laughs> and he, and he, he admits that he still watches them. And I agree with that. Like, for instance, I heard a bunch of people complaining that um, Roberto da Costa was the first mutant shown in this thing. And they're like, why are they doing this Brazilian, this dark skinned Brazilian guy? And I was like, he's an actual character from the comic books, you retards. That's what, about, that's, that's, that what that what that's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about, man. Like, is it not just X Men being X Men? It's just X Men being X Men. There are you're going to be nine minorities. There's going to be people who have handicaps. There are people who are oppressed. It's just it's just. So does that meet does that meet today's standard of a forced narrative? 
I don't think so. And if someone is arguing there is, I would say they probably don't know anything about X-Men. You know, you know what? what? Shout out to you, man, for being consistent. There are a lot of people that would have stumbled through that question and be like, well, Steve. <laughs> 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 so you don't feel like they're shoving a narrative down your throat. Well, okay, here's what it is. I agree with you in that that was clearly not Stan Lee's original vision. However, at a certain point, it did become the vision of the comic. It dominated the comic, and it just it is the comic. So an example is like, for instance, Wakanda or Black Panther comic books are going to be about black Africans. That's just how it is. So someone can't say it's woke because there are black people in a Black Panther comic. That doesn't make any fucking sense. That's what it's about, bro. <laughs> Right? So when people are like, look at all these minorities and gays and oppressed people in X-Men. That's what it's about, bro. <laughs> it's, about, it's, it's, it's about literally the team has been facing oppression. <laughs> right. but now, however, when the Avengers do it, I'm like, oh, woke motherfuckers. <laughs> That's what they've always been about being white. All right. So do you do you want to do did you have another topic or do you want to actually review episode five of X Men ninety seven. Well, you well no, I, I I had well I I had a few videos I wanted to show. First video. Oh, let's get some videos. Is from Matt Cat. Matt Cat wanted to show us this Brazilian situation of this chick trying to oh, cash Lord. a dead man's check. Uh, let's see. Oh Lord, this is like next level insanity. So, uh, wait. Yo, you, I I actually literally watched X Men ninety seven number uh, the latest episode, literally right before this episode started. I was gonna do the same thing, man, but it's you know the grind of getting home from work, showering, and getting... oh no, I feel you. <laughs> if you're coming home from work, I feel you. But I I made sure to, just in case you had seen it, because you you usually watch everything before me. Oh, I I I typically do. Hey, now I don't look so crazy. It's just the white background. Ah, now I look crazy again. Now you're now you look even more. No, crazy. bring it back to the other one. Bring it back to the other one. I like the, the yeah. We're there. in space for those who are listening <laughs> on Spotify. We're in space. Oh man, Google! If, shout out to everyone that thought they had a podcast that's going to be airing on Google Podcasts. Guess what? That shit's gone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah <that laughs> it's now gone. everything's moving over the the Google Music or YouTube Music now. All right, let's see this. It's brought a dead guy. No way. No, this cannot be real. I want this not to be real. Hey, he looks like he's moving. Is that just her moving him? That's her moving him. Matt, why would you send us something like this? This is disgusting. This is next level disgusting. Matt, what's up with your algorithm? Don't let it play again, please. Play it again? No, don't let it play again. This no, that was, that was truly upsetting. Thank you for that, <laughs> Matt. But it is interesting that this shit is happening. Oh that is that is sick and insane. And I hope that I hope they throw the book at her. Uh, and then but he that's says, proving the the social and moral decay of today. Instead of I hope they alerted the police. But what's the one thing that we should acknowledge here? Is that the only reason we're seeing this is that someone decided to pull out their phone and record it. Yeah, look, probably the banker. It looks like it's the guy working at the bank who was like, this is insane, and he decided to film this bitch. Um, and that, that's the thing. A lot of people, when they're in the middle of tragedy, a lot, a lot of us ask, why did they film this? When the guy started shooting up the place, why did they film that? When when somebody's daughter fell into the pool and started drowning, who, who was the person who was filming? But I think a lot of people just like, that's how they live now, through their, through yeah. their phones. Yeah, and I want to make sure that I'm being clear. I'm not condoning it. There is no but social statement of glorifying this. I saw a video that was absolutely insane to me, bro. Like, if there was no two videos, and both of them have to do with animals. One is a platform where they were having a dog show, and the platform broke, and a poor dog is sliding, and this is not edited. And to my knowledge, it's all real, and it's a freaking gator waiting for this dog to slide into its mouth. And they recorded it 
from beginning to end as this animal screamed in fear. The next video that I saw with that that was absolutely insane. Some person who lives in middle America who has a farm of dogs allows a black bear not big enough to be scared of to come on their property, flip over the thing where the dogs had their puppies and start eating the puppies. And they're in the house filming it. <laughs> I would have fucking killed the shit out of that bear as it approached. Oh, and the bear's going down. down. The bear's going down. Yeah, I would have enjoyed good. killing that bear. Same thing with that psychopath. And the when next I... time I encounter a black bear, I'm going to enjoy killing it. This one was... Just for it... revenge for those puppies. This one was a little weird and put me in a weird spot as a parent. There's a video of what's clearly Florida and a handicapped child who's in his onesie. And if you don't have a child that's autistic on the spectrum or deals with some type of um, mental... Mm -hmm. so, uh -huh. Yeah, anyway. The child is in his in his onesie. He's probably in his onesie because he has some sensory overloads thing where his onesie is where he feels comfortable. Mantis, he's running down the road. It's clearly hot outside. And this guy's filming him. Like, what the hell is this? And the child has a bit of a deformity, you know. And instead of turning his frigging camera off and getting out and making sure the baby's okay, he's filming it and then uploaded it later. I just, that's all I have to say about that. Moving back on into happier things. This person should be buried under the prison. I, yes. <laughs> I, absolutely, I absolutely agree. Um, and then another thing that I wanted to bring up is I want to bring up something that we had a topic of last time we had, were on. Yeah. We talked about the decay of the red pill movement, particularly oh, fresh yeah. and fit. Now they've been decayed for a while. We know they're pieces of garbage. Um, and recently, I think what it is, is we don't have to recap on this one. I think we've all seen the video of one of them defending the other one, right? Right. In regards, in regards to uh, fit, that's the one Myron over on what would be my left on the screen, uh, the Sudanese gentleman. And then Fresh is the darker fellow with the black hoodie on who recently shot up a freaking, and I don't mean with bullets, <laughs> yeah, baby batter. Now. Shot up some uh, alleged sex worker and got her pregnant. And his response to that was, she's a predator. She's a sex worker. You're a red pill content creator who preaches on a platform about making better choices. So you knew she was a Especially sex worker. sexual responsibility. That's like particularly something they talk about. All the and time. you still got her pregnant. You still failed at your own mission. But well, what he, well, even if he got her pregnant, that's one thing. Because, you know, you can't always control that. You don't always have control of that. However, he didn't take responsibility in the end. When he tells all these other, when he tells hoes to get responsibility. Right. He's right? a piece of shit. So yeah. continue. So I see they so the quartering has been very vocal about what pieces of garbage they are. And this is surprising. They decided to have the quartering on their show. Oh, they, they will always bring on detractors. They, that I will give them props for. They will bring their critics on if the critics are willing to and come so on. And so obviously we're not going to watch the whole thing, but let's watch snippets of this. An OG in the space, man. So Legend. for those that might not be um, familiar with you, can you introduce yourself to the people, please? Yeah, yeah. Thanks for having me on. I just want to pre-announce. I don't. My whiteness precludes me from understanding about eighty percent of your sound effects, <laughs> so I don't know what they mean. When you, he said when that. You wow. Okay. Them. But um, yeah, shout out. Uh, you know, thanks for having me on. I, I've been uh, on YouTube since this. maybe yeah for like uh, twenty years, and uh, on Rumble for the past couple of years. That we. That's one thing we have in common. We've embraced rumble and uh that's what it's all about free speech and uh and um you know the alternative options to youtube is is i think what brings us together the most yeah um let me ask you about that jim like what what do you think like how important is it to have alternative platforms and protecting free speech in the censored world that we're in i mean i know we were chopping it up about that earlier we got dom in the studio by the way as well guys he's here chilling with us and we're talking about free speech and all that other stuff but what's your general thoughts on it we didn't get to talk about it yeah, I mean, I think uh, obviously Let's if you've been around for a minute, you guys have been around for a place. Yes, there right. There was that famous know, soldier yeah. that got. Yeah. Yeah. And there used to be websites for that kind of stuff. All sorts of crazy. That's the world I grew up in. And then like YouTube came around and basically sanitized the Internet. Well, now you have X for better or worse. You can basically see the real world as it happens and rumble. And even like, again, yeah, shout out kick too. like as long as as far as I know, it. kick. You know, I feel like they've banned some of these like weirdo yeah. IRL streamers, but for yeah. the most part, 
They've been okay, as far as I know. They bring them back. It's weird. I think they got like a publicity stunt where they ban them and then they bring them back. It's really strange. The yeah, we got we have to talk long. over yeah. that content they because right they do right. copyright. And then they tweet about it. Yeah, no, um, yeah, 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 I'm convinced they got like some kind of market. Like, but th there's creators that literally got banned and got strikes. Yeah, I'm see, just concerned see. with how we do it now with the church being involved. Was, excuse me, not with the church, with the state being involved. If you do it through a church, even better. You do it through the masjid, cool, whatever you want to do. But my thing is just like. With the way marriage is now, where the state's involved, I just like I'm just I just tell guys you got to be wary, man. You got to be careful. It's a weird it's a weird uh, thing because um, you know I've been oh man I was I've hoping for fireworks. Same this is not I know, no, 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 no. So, like, I've been out I of the game so long. Get, I doubt you would get fireworks I'm out of this interaction. Attractive and can just slay any bitch I want anytime Wait, I want. Married? How long yeah. you married for, Jeremy? <laughs> for almost twenty years, dude. Holy I got crap. married in two thousand and eight, so what uh, 15, 16 years. Wow. Congrats, um, congrats, man. That's that's a huge yeah. accomplishment. Nigga, how old? Are yeah. You? He's 40. He's 40. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, uh, she was with me when I had nothing. He's clearly. So he's clearly. She, she's, you know, she was a big reason. I got very lucky. And I know that not everyone. Oh, look at how those views are dropping. Especially as, Oof. you know, I've got friends what? who are in the. Look at the Rumble views are dropping. Right now. <laughs> uh, just like, what, what would you say? Let me ask you, you both this, okay? Yeah, sure. Is it like, oh, I keep. I could get down this like yeah, yeah like it's I was just, hoping it's this would be more explosive. Um, no, no, no. Yeah, it, I mean, look, no, it doesn't surprise Even me like, that it isn't. For example, social media. So, like you said earlier, look at what's happening now. People are being exposed. Well, you know what like, this really is, there and so not to call the not to shout the quartering out, but I will say that he he is like he speaks really big talk on his show, and I noticed that like he doesn't really, when confronted, stand up for his shit talking right and so this is this is him just being like a coward yeah and all right so real quick in regards to fresh and fit and all that stuff let me say some nice things about them right the one nice thing i think i will say is that they are committed to free speech whatever their ulterior motives are and i do have a lot of respect that at, they were at, they were able to survive being demonetized on youtube because someone some people thought that was going to be the death blow some people are saying the whole thing going on with fresh is going to be the death blow i think they really have cornered a good market for themselves for die hard fans right and there are always going to be people who show up to hear the next crazy thing they say or they're going to be people that show up just to support them but more importantly here's the thing about jeremy from the quartering man he's been doing this shit for a long long freaking time man and I will give him his respect for being willing to interact with people, even if they might have an opposing view for him than him, man. I'm not surprised that they're not going back and forth about this because that's not really his farmhouse, man. Who they should have had on, really, are the guys who've been trying to put the death nail and have been doing a great job at it. Abba and Preach. Right, right. They're arch nemeses. Yeah, uh, Abba and Preach have really had their foots on these guys' necks for quite some time man and i i just gotta say this man i wish we could interact with a fresh and fit fan and here's my reasoning behind it there are men out there who claim and i'm not gonna you know try to disprove their experience not their truth but their experience <laughs> right that these guys have really helped them there are guys who are like man i got my life in order when i started watching this show i did their seminar bop 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 but i just would love to interact fresh and with fit seminar Oh yeah, they're dating coaches. You didn't know that? They charge. I, they I didn't charge. know they were charging for that. I just thought they were cool. Yeah, no, they that. they charge for their services, man. And uh, it's just at this point, man, it's sad. The red pill had potential, like so many other movements, to do something, and because of the actions of people trying to monetize their efforts, you know, it's at where it's at. They're actually beefing with another OG red pill red pillar on YouTube called mediocre tutorials and reviews oh i love that guy yeah and all he said mediocre tutorials and reviews actually i'll see if i can find a clip for you um oh, really all he said was that the obvious like hey man if, if we don't know if this happened we don't know if this woman is a sex worker he was making the point that he feels like fresh was being preyed on and they decided to respond to him and like call him a lame and all that shit so does it doesn't does, it doesn't surprise me man uh, it's, it's, but... go for it it's like Shaolin says these two clowns won't go away. Well, that's the whole thing that nowadays, like, can canceling doesn't actually cancel you. And if anything, in a lot of cases, it makes you stronger. And so it's true. They got demonetized on, on YouTube. That only makes people more interested in what they're doing. Right.
Right. And so I'm sure they got a lot of Rumble followers out of that. I'm sure they I'm sure they found a way to monetize it in some way. Probably it, they certainly didn't replace that amount of money cuz YouTube, you know, YouTube is the big time, but um I'm sure but they are more I got to say I've watched more f- uh, Fresh and Fit since they've been kicked off than before. Well, yeah, that's because mostly because I, I make you watch this shit <laughs> for, when we're covering right, them. But, but they're scandalous, so they have some. There's there's a story there. Yeah, absolutely. Before they were just knuckleheads. It's just like uh, in regards to No Jumper, right? It's No Jumper is one of the biggest platforms on this, on the like on YouTube. Man, it had the potential to do amazing things, and now No Jumper is just the laughing stock of the internet. And you have Adam who does not do a good job of changing that narrative. Click the video I just sent you right now, brother. All right, real quick. Um, nice things is crazy. Uh, D says, wait, I thought they were in a relationship for some six months or something. Yes, they were, D. They were. <laughs> Miss Hippie, welcome in. Always we good to Ms. see Hippie. Miss Hippie. We love Miss Hippie. Um, did never see enough of her. If only they were interesting, though. I agree. They are super not interesting. Good or bad attention is good for business. Yeah, there's basically no bad press i assume unless you're like a pedo or something but other than that all the other types of press are good well except for what adam did for his april fool's joke allegedly that was all bad oh my god i can't even shake that and i i I think a part of it is real honestly i really i really i think it's very possible so we're gonna watch a video from one of my favorite content creators but the best editor in the business o'shea uh, Jackson. okay o'shea Jackson, always <laughs> welcome on this, on this bad boy um, <laughs> this is absolutely amazing because he has no love for fresh and fit but i think he's fairly objective in his scrutiny of them man he only scrutinized the things that they put out there right and they put out a lot of stuff that allow people to scrutinize them so they're going back and forth with mediocre tutorials and review and this is just it doesn't get much better than this. It's like every other job that has responsibility. Some of you guys think that YouTubers are jokes and it's not a real career. They should go out and get a real job. I do but to be that. honest, YouTubers have a <laughs> lot of influence, especially in certain spaces. Okay, I'm going to stop him right there. I'm going to absolutely stop him right there. Now, I've always known since the beginning, since people use the term influencer, that if you call yourself an influencer, you not only don't influence anyone, but right. you're a fucking idiot. It's and like you I, call yourself an alpha. <laughs> exactly. It's the guys who call themselves alpha who don't even understand the terminology. Right. Like right, you said, right. They, they keep getting bitch slapped by anybody. <laughs> you know, they're little simps to their women and they let their women, women like, you know, their women are holding their fucking nuts in their, in their purse while they go out. Right. Right. Um, and, and that's the same thing with anyone who's like, I'm an influencer. I'm an influencer. I promise you, there's like a handful of people. Who probably don't use that term who influence the shit out of people yeah I'm but when saying, he I... says and people are, here's what it is youtubers you're all here and this includes us to be for entertainment you are here to be mocked and laughed at or agreed with and we're like oh we like you we like you until we don't like you right like like ben shapiro i liked i liked him for a bit and then i'm like oh you're gonna diss my girl candace and it, it was that easy to unsubscribe it was that fucking easy i mean <sighs> And that's anybody. You see how people will, will lose their empires and gain their empires back, yeah, and all this stuff. It's they're not they're not they don't influence anybody. No, I mean they make may, they may make an impact on a, a certain group of people for an extended time, but I would definitely say there isn't a longevity that you see with a lot of influencers. And the term is used too loosely, right? Someone that can really move the needle is someone I would call an influencer. I hate to say this, but a lot of these broads you see on Instagram, right, who are selling their physical image and likeness to creams and all that shit they are truly influencers because people are buying the shit based off of what they're seeing man a site like freaking hollywood unlocked or the shade room they can call themselves influencers because they actually do move the needle of culture right even though people know that they should not trust anything coming first second from either from the shade room right people still tune into it as if it's actually a legitimate news source and that is what an influencer is yeah and there's yeah like you said there's only a handful of them but most yeah. of them are just here to be laughed at yep i mean you can look at somebody like kai sanat this is a guy who streams in his house and comes to nigeria and gets a warm welcome because he, of youtube he influences 13 year olds yeah <laughs> in the city of new york 
he got arrested because over 10,000 people showed up to his event. That's how much power influencers have, all right? And whether you believe it or not, it's true. Are influencers 10, have people a lot go of to power, his? despite what you You're think wrong. about them. <laughs> no. But You're the reality no. is, is that when people see you on YouTube every day, they feel like they know you. They feel like they have a lot in common with you. Yeah, that's unhealthy. Even that if they have never met you. Social shit. And is, for yeah. some influencers, they have a lot of impact on how people live their lives and see the world, i.e. Kevin Samuels, right? Andrew Tate in this space, fresh and fit. And when so, you- for instance, I would say that I don't know. I don't I don't know about fresh and fit. I think they're there for entertainment. But I would say the first two that he said were, you know, I'm going to say were, for, you know, because Kevin is no longer with us, but right. were, were influencers. Yeah. There, there are people who actually will buy sell whatever they'll be like oh what is tate wearing i want to i want to wear what tate is wearing i want to on a box the way he walks is you know what's that what type of cigar is he smoking i want to do that i um, will definitely say that kevin samuels had a social impact that will never be forgotten like never be ever, forgotten. for as long oh as god, there's a culture legend. war there will always be mention of kevin samuels yeah so. oh my god he's the real deal he is the real deal you're Rest telling a man this is how you should live you should do X, Y, and Z. People expect you to do that, especially in the male space. But that doesn't happen a lot. I understand that people are hypocritical. People will make mistakes. But again, nobody does. Nobody is more hypocritical than the Fresh and Fit podcast. Right. <laughs> now, these guys are the same dudes telling you, don't simp. Don't clap cheeks without a condom. Don't deal with single moms. But they're out there doing exactly the opposite of what they said that they shouldn't do. Instead of coming out and publicly apologizing and saying they made mistakes, they try to attack people that pretty much review their material. Now, one of the people they've done that with is mediocre tutorials and reviews. Uh, he's a he's a buddy of mine here on the platform. He's never had any problems. I he's like never him. had any situations yeah. happen. His name has been good. He's an upstanding guy. We don't agree on everything, but he's an upstanding guy. Right, I, I I think he's one of the most quality people as a as a content creator that you can never meet. Right, hands down, he's a really solid guy. He reviewed what Fresh CEO said about this whole situation on this podcast when Fresh was on there with a lawyer, and then here's what happened. Now that's not necessarily what I had an issue with, but the divorce lawyer was telling Fresh to shut up. And to be quiet, which I'm sure he had that conversation oh with Fresh prior to hopping on the call. And then Fresh just willfully admits this little gem right here. But I will say this. I personally should not have nutted within a 304. That's right. Fresh said I shouldn't have came inside the lady. Pretty much admitting. You know what? These guys are the biggest idiots ever. I can't I cannot believe anyone would say that. That it wasn't a joke, you know what I mean? He's not he can't even dodge paternity now. <laughs> oh man. Uh, yeah. If she's pregnant, she might be because I went ahead and booty clap sounds. I clapped the cheeks and left the you know what inside her. And he Let's said it. Continue to go forward. Fresh and fit then decides to disrespect MTR. Now, I heard about this, but I couldn't find the clip. Let's play the clip and see what they said. And also, they mentioned me in the stream. All right? Because a lot of you fucking haters, a lot of these YouTubers that are talking shit, uh, and the fu- who, who was the f- quick ones to make a video? Anus and Leech right away? Yeah, right away. You still don't want a fucking box. Coward. Still uh, making videos. Mediocre. Uh, what's the name again? These niggas, man. Like, bro, oh, bro, you know these, the full yeah, story. Pay y'all bills, man. Yeah, MTR. You don't know pay the full y'all story, bills, bro. you fucking losers, bro. You took a clip from her and made a whole shit. video. Like, you don't Holy know the full shit. Story. They don't know the full story. Just commenting. And you, and it's crazy. I would love the day that a more powerful YouTuber would call us out. <laughs> You think you want that scrutiny until it comes, man. You think you want no, that the way the way the way we would handle it. We're old school, so you know we, we would handle it in a different way. I mean, I, I'm a bl- I'm a blackout for sure. I'm a blackout for sure. But here's a cr- here's the crazy dynamic between these two, right? So they have both been in a situation where a woman has exposed their red pillness, right? Mm-hmm. So uh fit over there 
had some controversy going on with a fitness influencer, uh, a, a single mother who does her thing on Instagram. I actually asked her to come on the show on uh, the com- on conversations that matter. And I just sent an email like I usually do to bigger content creators. And most of them don't respond. And she actually responded. She was like, hey, you know, I'm in the midst of a lot of stuff going on, moving and all that stuff. I, I don't have time for the show, but I did check out your thing, you know, blah, 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 blah maybe another time. And I was like, hey, thank you for reaching back out. And she was like, you know, I think I said something to the effect, I know I don't have as big a channel as you, but I appreciate you responding. She was like, well, one of your videos got way more views than anything I've ever done on YouTube. And we shared a laugh. And I was like, yo, have a good life. And that was that. But she exposed this guy, uh, exposed the conversation they had where they invited her to come on to the show, right? And Fit over there basically shot his shot but in the weirdest way man he's like yeah so if you come on the show he's making arrangements for why she should sleep with him and he doesn't have business dealings with women that he doesn't sleep with and i'm like bro what is happening right now so of course she releases all that information and he's just like and and what and what (laughs) and i'm just like but yo man you're leveraging your position to get laid this isn't about you being it's a ladies' pathetic. man. That's this totally is about pathetic. you being able. Let me make this comparison. And I, I think I've heard them say this. I'm not sure. So let me not put it on them. But they strike me as the type of guys that would use this argument. They strike me as the type of guys that would use an argument like always a fat girl. Once a fat girl, always a fat girl. Have you ever heard this argumentation? Yes. Like no matter how much weight she loses, she will always have the inner workings of a woman who was overweight and she will have the self-confidence of a woman that was overweight at one point. She's going to do those type of things, right? Fresh over there strikes me as the type of dude that even though he has money now, once a nerd, always a nerd, right? Once a simp, always a simp. He has the inner psychological workings of a simp and that's why he would surround himself with women that he calls 304s expecting a different result. Because that's the way a guy who could not get it without having money behaves even when he has money. And so I'm going to put everyone on in um, a little secret about not just men, but women too. But really, I'm shouting out uh, confident people, people who are ultra confident, you know, the Don Drapers of the world from Mad Men or people who have this ultra, you know, this presence where they're like, I control everything and everyone around me. I got to tell you, Every single one of them I've ever met, got to know, analyzed, ripped, ripped apart, it's all an act. At the end of the day, we're all insecure children, and we're the same right. insecure children we were when we were younger. So you're right. Once a nerd, always a nerd. Once a fat chick, always a fat chick. You know what I'm saying? Once a creep, always a creep. It just it is what it is. And when you put on, when you're like, you know what? I'm going to change who I am. I'm going to change my personality. You can't change your personality. That's a mask you're wearing. Now, I do believe in I do believe in the fact that you can go through cognitive therapy. You can deal with a lot of these core issues. But at some point, man, like when it becomes your social marketing campaign that I am this ladies man, bro, you're not a ladies it's man. An act, man. It's, it's an act. Revenue. And it's because you got rev, man. You got revenue. And that's why these women want to spend any time with you. And they're really not confident at the end of the day. You're right. If they didn't have, if they didn't have that money in their hand right there. Well, they would they would fall apart. They wouldn't know what to say. Uh, As a matter of fact, a lot of these guys who are ballers or whatever, they're like pointing. The only thing they do talk about is money and material things because they don't have any substance. Yeah, and uh, you know, so and the thing with this guy, mediocre tutorial and reviews. I remember I showed you this a while ago on another fanboy when we were talking about the demise of the red pill. He jumped out of the black manosphere space because of certain ding- things that were going on. He's just not a guy that's going to go back and forth with these dudes. Why y'all comparing nerds to simps? Okay, let me let me let me explain that, right? I'm not there's nothing wrong with being a nerd, right? I'm talking, let me not even use the word nerd. If you're the type of guy that struggled with rejection from women and all these things, and you never came to a place of peace, that it wasn't just about you, it was about the type of women you were chasing, and you keep bringing that type of thinking into your new monetary success you're still going to have those same behaviors, right? Because a part of you knows he knows that these women don't want anything to do with you other than you having bank. And when I look at that brother right there, that brother, fresh, I can see it coming off of him, man. You know for a fact, you know for a fact, he's the type of guy that lies about getting pussy. I'm going to get real with you. I'm going to get real with you right now, man. He's the type of guy that makes up a story and we have to listen to it. 
Right, and, I, and all his boys know that he's making the story up because they know him so well. And they they just pretend, especially when these guys have money. You know what I'm saying? Like, and, and, and you know, we're, we're smaller content creators. They, they're they never going to respond. But if they did, I would still say the same thing. You know? you know, you are the weak link for your podcast. Let me go there. Let me completely black out, man. If we're talking about surviving social onslaught, the best move for fit would be to drop that dude right there. He brings nothing to the podcast. Myron is wildly more intelligent and wildly more interesting because he's a former federal agent. He was doing streams where he was breaking down potential cases for rappers because he used to be a federal agent. Do you know this about him? That he was actually a, an FBI agent. Now that you mention it, it sounds familiar, but I, I didn't. Yeah. I and I thought, thought these that. streams were like, I thought they were very I informative because he's, he's talking on them as a former federal agent. And I'm like, man, he's actually more enjoyable Without that dead weight over there, because we know that dude's a fraud. I got my opinions on him as well. Don't nice. make, no mistake, no, make no mistake about it, Mantis. But that dude right there, you know what type of guy he is, man. Uh, but I assume they're besties. Yeah, yeah. They're, apparently they're besties. And here's the thing, right? The whole they uh, Abba and Preach box us. Um, Preach, the brother with the dreads, said, I'll box both of you guys. When we really know that that guy isn't going to box Preach. Fresh isn't going to box preach. Yeah. It's going to be fit and preach. You know what I'm saying? So it's like he's dead weight. It's corny to me. It's so corny to me. Now, I don't want this man to get rinsed. I don't want him to lose his money to this woman or any of that stuff. I'm not condoning any of her predatory behaviors, but you cannot do this, man. You cannot have this platform teaching guys how to be the realest, the illest, get the bag, and you can't put a condom on with a Woman, you call a 304? <laughs> I feel like I'm taking crazy pills, bro. Jesus, I love it when Steve blacks out. <laughs> I feel like I'm taking crazy pills. Like, like you look, look at him. He is the dude that gets smacked in the club. He is. That's him. Yes, absolutely. Is. <laughs> that's him, man. <laughs> Yo, he's the guy that costs everyone the opportunity to get laid. It's him. This is the same guy that told a story about running a train on women with a basketball player. Like, and if I was the bat, I, I may have gotten that story wrong, but he was invited into an orgy. If I was the basketball player in that story, I would have bought a ticket and flown out there and whooped his ass i'm like why the fuck are you bringing that up during right. the me too movement what's wrong with you <laughs> right like, what's wrong with you this guy's an idiot <laughs> he's an idiot <laughs> uh yeah and that, and that, and the, once an idiot always an idiot once again we can keep going on this this theme right um and so yeah a talker is always going to be a talker that's another thing yes they like bro. to talk like talking you're like shut the f up and they, they'll keep talking i'm sorry i'm, I'm gonna take a deep breath but it's, it's crazy it's crazy because you're you're gonna attack a guy like mediocre tutorial reviews who's still in good standing and what used to be the manosphere space right this guy is in great mantis he's quite literally one of the most beloved dudes in that space for right. being consistent right you're gonna attack this guy because he's responding to what you did. Yeah, for you're the stupid shit you put into this world. You you made public. You made every, you made it everyone's business yeah. by letting it allowing it to leak. Um, Shaolin said he's the one that everyone always flames in the group. Yeah, one hundred percent, one hundred percent. Oh man! At any rate, um, these fucking morons. You got anything else for us tonight, brother? No, that's pretty much it. We've hit up pretty much every topic known to man. Right. <laughs> How you living, dog? I'm living good, man. <laughs> I'm living good. It's just it's so crazy. Oh, closing topic in the last seven minutes. Are you up on the sprinkle sprinkle movement? Do you know what this is? Sprinkle sprinkle. You know what that shit is? All right. Huh? Okay, so there's a new movement in the culture war, which we all enjoy so much. You enjoy it. I enjoy it. D. Bex. I, I enjoy sprinkles or I enjoy the culture you, war. You enjoy the culture war. Oh, you know I do. <laughs> so let me see you if I can believe find... what I said to a leftist the other day. What'd you say? I told that libtard that they could go suck it. I said, <laughs> go find handicap parking, you bum ass fool. Oh my goodness. It's fucking amazing. I'm gonna see if I can find so there's a, he was a wearing movie. some sort of brace on his leg. I don't know. 
there's a movement on uh on Twitter. I mean, on TikTok. Drizzle, Twitter, drizzle, says Matt. Where there's a woman, a content creator, and she's known for using the term sprinkle, sprinkle as she's laying out the truth for women. And she helps women as a life coach, helping them to understand how to get the bag, whether it be the bag in business or the bag at the expense of the man you're marrying. Literally, this is a quote from her. I want you to, I'm going to see if I can find it. Oh my goodness. I meant to send this to you. And I was like, man, this will go mad. If you're yeah, I, I know. I know it's drizzle drizzle for, for men, but it's sprinkle sprinkle for women. And where the fuck is it? Okay. There we go. I, I'm just going to send you the one I can find, brother. I'm going to send you the one I can find. I was trying to find mediocre tutorials because his is so much more entertaining. And sending it to Discord right now. Boom. This is a perfect way to close this show out. <laughs> I have a feeling I'm already going to love this shit. It's about the soft guy era. <laughs> Are you up on the soft guy era? What's soft guy era? <laughs> oh man, just you don't spend enough time on black <laughs> on black TikTok, brother. We gotta get you tapped in. <laughs> no, please tell me there aren't soft black people. <laughs> no, so the soft boy era. All right, hit play on this shit. It's war. The males have started saying drizzle, drizzle, like sprinkle, sprinkle. It's a new generation of men, so are are so feminine. <laughs> drizzle, drizzle. I thought they were talking about Drake. Mm -mm. It doesn't stick as good as sprinkle, sprinkle. Oh yes, they do sound like they're actually drooling mm -hmm. <laughs> okay it's giving bro like drooling she said it sounds like we're drooling she can't even talk right she you know she got to do the sprinkle sprinkle you know she got the little stuff in her mouth or, or her face or whatever i think it's botox i don't know what it is but fellas it is wartime drizzle drizzle versus sprinkle sprinkle we're getting this rolling <laughs> do what you and need to do in my live i said i was gonna start trolling shira shira but it looks like it already has reached her and the trolling will start tomorrow this is crazy you gotta love it man it's about that time fellas what am i watching here what's we happening doing it. <laughs> just keep doing it big drizzle drizzle and they hating it these women in 2024 are hating the drizzle drizzle movement they can get out here and talk about 4b 4c 4a all the way to z once you mention <laughs> drizzle drizzle and turn back on them the foolishness they've been talking about all of a sudden you this and you that and you ain't a man get out of my face yeah it, it got a little ring to it drizzle drizzle <laughs> here we go here we go i don't know what's better is these dudes fighting back about taking their gym back and not being called gym creeks anymore mm -hmm. or this drizzle drizzle because girl woo, <laughs> the way these men are fighting back has me cackling <laughs> i am in love with this drizzle drizzle because the way these women are losing their dumb minds kicked off and these men's comment sections are getting blown up. I don't know which one I like more. You know what? I do know. I love the drizzle drizzle more. Drizzle, drizzle. I love the drizzle drizzle more. Because you have so many delusional women out here thinking that they were doing something with their, <laughs> oh, what is it, 4B, 4A, 4 don't give. <laughs> and they expect 4B. these men to just roll over and take it. You, these women have done nothing short of absolutely obliterate men for the last few years mm -hmm. longer than that now you're going to learn what consequences are because these Jesus men aren't going to take it anymore. Anymore. they're not going to take it anymore so the masculinity there the machismo what is it the high value all of the garbage that these women put out Y'all are going to learn. Put your boots on. Put your <laughs> okay, boots on because I, 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 I cannot it. wait I for it. these I found it. it. Yeah, I oh, found please. it. Please. Because this has not answered anything. This has okay. not answered what Drizzle Drizzle is. It, because you can't really, you can't make stupid make sense. So Drizzle Drizzle is in response to that content creator, the woman that was like, I thought they were talking about Drake. She's a female content creator that's teaching women how to get the bag, right? And one of her catchphrases is sprinkle, sprinkle. And mm -hmm. so the soft boy era, the soft guy era, or whatever the soft bro era, whatever you want to call it, is in response to the soft girl era. 
era, right? Mm -hmm. Where it's like men, and you'll see this in the video I'm about to send you, men of means saying like, if you can't bring the same amount of value that I bring into the relationship, I don't want to have anything to do with you. So they're essentially turning these women's argument back onto them. And the women are not responding very well. <laughs> and they're like, they feel like they're you're we're appropriating their movement. Click on the MTR one. That that's the one you got to go for. I'm sorry to the audience, man. I thought we were wrapping it up, but I always got to keep Mantis tapped in with what's going on in the black internet. <laughs> Wait, is this the same one? No, it's different. Different. It's the the latest one I sent you. Okay, yeah, no, I'm, I'm on the right one. Okay. Um, blammo. There we go. Started saying drizzle, drizzle, right. like so this is the woman. it's a new generation of men, so are are so feminine. <laughs> drizzle, drizzle. I thought they were talking about Drake. It doesn't stick as good as sprinkle, sprinkle, though. It sound like they're actually drooling. Don't, don't, don't let this come. Drizzle, drizzle. This is a low IQ person trying okay. to respond to something she that can't. Might be drilling. Sound like your water bill about to get cut off. Anyway. <laughs> sound like your water pressure low. You live in a bad area. Drizzle, drizzle sounds like y'all forgot to pay the water bill. Oh my God. <laughs> I need to annoying. change that. It's not. To do better so we wish we were there okay, yeah. shaping up to be one of the most interesting years in recorded history it started off in january with cat williams but on the santa Sharp podcast and told you that this was going to be the year of truth and already in april we're getting an answer to the sprinkle sprinkle movement in the form of drizzle drizzle i was going to tell the 4g pilbros that drizzle drizzle doesn't make sense Look, if you're broke, just say that. But no, in all seriousness, ladies, you recognize <laughs> there's no way you can win this, right? There are two very specific reasons why this is impossible for you to win. Why it's impossible for you to defeat the soft guy era. Why you will never defeat Drizzle Drizzle. First being that the guys are just using your own arguments. Y'all have had some real doozies. So these guys <laughs> have unlimited ammo. Like they have an endless supply of sh to say to you and the second reason is because they're using your own arguments anytime you do defeat something they say you're defeating your own argument you're defeating yourself one of the best parts about this is that y'all are getting so fucking upset <laughs> the men are just having the time of their lives <laughs> you understand how much fun men are having with this You'll see just it fun doing it, but having even more fun watching all y'all melt down watching all of y'all lose your minds because a man has given you back that same energy and they're not offended when you call them soft hell they started this whole thing by calling themselves that the best part is when you try to insult them when you try to talk shit about them and make them feel bad about it they are literally coming back at you with exactly what you said word for word ladies you have literally already said all the arguments that men will ever need to defeat you you gave them everything they needed and now they're using it i'm sorry to say ladies but the soft guy era <laughs> is impossible to defeat drizzle drizzle now some of you may not understand the inception of all of this drizzle drizzle shit well let me give there you a brief go. history lesson back in around 2019 when i first came into the sector and i would do reactions to dating content not only would i do reactions to the rp content creators over here but i would go on the opposite side and look at the more feminist content creators and dating coaches and see what they were saying and upload reactions to them. One of those dating coaches was a woman by the name of Shira Seven. So a lot of women get awesome. caught up before they even get anything, before they even get a meal. Before they I want you to know, everything she's about to say is what she believes. This is not chat, a chat bot. Mm -hmm. This is not AI. What this woman is about to express is what she's teaching other women in their soft girl, girl era. Okay. Mantis, you're going to get triggered. Take a deep breath. Okay. Here we go. Before they even get a trip, before they even get, you know, jewelry, before they even get money, cash, they already in love before they even get on date two. So this is why a lot of women get, you know, the bad end of the deal because they don't know how to control and keep them emotions for when they're absolutely necessary. Okay. So 
Do not ask me dumb, stupid questions about love. Do not ask me dumb, stupid questions about feelings. Do not ask me dumb, stupid questions about, but he, I, I have to be attractive. Don't ask me them, them dumb, stupid questions because I already told you. I don't deal in that. This is the wrong channel. I deal in getting the bag and getting yourself exactly where you want to be in life, getting your business started, getting yourself established, maybe through somebody else's pockets, maybe through dating an older man, maybe through having a sugar daddy, maybe through getting a husband that's going to pay out the bills to set yourself up. But that's what I teach on my channel. But well, this isn't new. I don't teach all of that because you know what? At the end of the day, it doesn't matter. Now, Shira Seven has been exposed multiple times as lying to the degree of uh, her husband's wealth, but coaches women, really confused women, by the way. By the way, if you guys want to be a content creator, talking to men is a lot more difficult than talking to women. Men tend to be a lot more contrarian, less believers. Man, it's way easier to get women to buy product, opt into whatever bullshit product that you have for them. And the evidence for this is who consumes most of the astrological sign, tarot, card reading, palm reading bullshit <laughs> on this planet. It's women. <laughs> Nevertheless, for content, I would go into these Shira 7 live streams, take a look at the content where I would hear such things as if he's not paying for your phone bill, your rent, taking you on all of these lavish dates, then he's a dusty. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Flash forward to like I mean, end of 2022, what... early no, 2023. Do you, do you get it? Sprinkle, sprinkle. They're sprinkling. To go viral on right. TikTok for whatever reason. As she began to post her content to TikTok and much younger women than her began to take notice and listen. But now in hilarious, ironic fashion, there are men today that are trolling everyone who participates in the sprinkle, sprinkle shit with drizzle, drizzle. No hymen. No diamond. <laughs> drizzle, drizzle. And these women are so damn mad. Those men that are just making themselves look worse. Supposedly, drizzle, drizzle is about leaving women alone. Yet, they are still in women's comments. Drizzle, drizzle means I'm too broke to make it rain. Drizzle, drizzle means I already bought these $100,000 geodes, so I know I'm good. I need you to drizzle to step up to show me you're equal. Drizzle Drizzle means I'm in my soft guy era. I'm taking my $9,000 Fujifilm camera and traveling the world to do photography. And if you can't fund that to help me start my art gallery, then you're not a good person, Drizzle Drizzle. <laughs> because what kind of girl who claims to be a woman doesn't love art enough to support his man Facts. as he starts an art gallery? Drizzle Drizzle. <laughs> drizzle Drizzle means support me. This is one of my newest Airbnbs. Prove to me that you're not broke and book this property for a week. Fly out to Dallas and show me that you're not a brokey and that you are my equal, Drizzle. Drizzle, Drizzle means buy me another one of these to show me you appreciate the same kind of art that I appreciate, Drizzle, Drizzle. But you know what Drizzle, Drizzle really means? It means that I should not have to ask. You should be able to feel my energy. If I have to ask, I don't want it. What if you wanted fuck? to, you would. Drizzle Drizzle means that if you're broke, don't even reply to this video. This is a non-broke conversation. <laughs> what I love so much about this Drizzle Drizzle movement is that it's a sarcastic troll response up, to Sprinkle Sprinkle. Sprinkle. <laughs> so women that have an issue with it are having to combat with the logic of Sprinkle Sprinkle, which that prior to Drizzle Drizzle, they support it. So talking shit on Drizzle Drizzle nullifies your own arguments the next because one is all you amazing. gotta do is just switch the gender. It. You're fighting with yourself and you don't even know it. Drizzle, drizzle. This soft guy era, <laughs> I'm only dating chicks who can keep up with my hefty requirements of Johnny Walker Blue. <laughs> I won't tolerate anything less than that. You think I'll, I expect you to pick up your dirty clothes off the floor, but you're not gonna give me Johnny Walker Blue? Drizzle, drizzle, baby. In my soft guy era, I am only dating women who can at least double what I already have. So I've got a six bedroom, 7,000 square foot house. Damn. I am only going to date women who have at least a 12 wow. bedroom, 14,000 square foot house. Drizzle, drizzle. 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 <laughs> What's so funny about these videos as well is that the majority of the women that are really pissed about this shit keep on saying that it's coming from dusties, from brokies, when it's obviously not. Even the high value men are trolling y'all dummies. In my soft guy era, I am only going to date women who can provide me with better than what I already have. Hmm. 22 way rear power adjustable seat. I need, I'm only going to date a woman moving forward in my soft guy era. It has a 44-way rear passenger seat. 
More leg room. Now we got it. This guy has worked hard his entire life to achieve all of these different materials. Oh, I'm gonna start. Things. Yo, you've now convinced me. Let I'm gonna make a soft drizzle guy drizzle era if he do so chooses. Jizzle drizzle, King. You deserve better. And of course, the Sprinkle Sprinkle conglomerate, the Modern Woman conglomerate, absolutely hate what these guys are saying, no, using their own game against them. And of course, the shaming tactics come out. A lot of y'all dudes need to stop trying to play it off and just admit it. Like, a exactly, lot of y'all dudes Mr. really do want a man. Because I be seeing, like, dudes getting you know, online talk about how they in they soft boy era <laughs> and they want to be taken care of and they want dates and it's they want It's a troll, flowers, dummy. Like, why, as a man, do you want somebody to spoil you? Like, as a man, it should make you feel good to provide, to do for your woman. Like, Bro, does she really not get it? She loves me. <laughs> she, she obviously loves me, y'all. She's been in my old videos and my comments before. But one thing I realize is women really hate men that know their worth mm. like on some real i'm not even joking yeah that's exactly why they hate content over on this side of the internet there you go. That's I, why they I, hated I Kevin Samuel the, so much. Uh, because it time. introduces <laughs> information for men to understand their worth and their value and i get it because why would anybody even if it's artificial power want their power taken away there's been a cold war waging on men for decades now. And the impact of that Cold War is men achieving magnificent things within their life and still being treated like shit. Why? Because of the normalization of all of the media around movements such as Sprinkle Sprinkle. Let's go. When we stand on business, you can stop it. You can stop it. Yeah. So, yo, basically, I feel you. I'm going to start making drizzle drizzle videos again. <laughs> I will say, I, I in, in the beginning of this, I eye rolled it because I was like, Oh, uh, this is just another excuse for red pillars to shit on. Uh, I don't even know what they call the woman version of red pillars, but like, <laughs> you know what I mean? But there's oh, there's always this back and forth. There's always like two yeah. sides of the internet of men and women dissing each other, ripping each other apart. And basically what ends up happening is no one's getting laid. <laughs> and that's not good for anybody, right? Uh, and I was like, oh, great, another reason. But this is funny because <laughs> although she may have coined Sprinkle Sprinkle, Bitches have been going on about that shit forever. <laughs> you look like a brokey. Yo, you're I'm the, just like, get a job. Get a job. <laughs> you're the best part about this, man, is I have the same argument for these women that I have for red pill men, man. What makes you think you deserve anything more than that? what comes your way? Right. What makes you think you deserve anything better? Right? right it's the people who work for things that get the things hopefully that they're working for some people will work for things their entire life and never get the things that they want but it strikes me as odd that a woman in a acura would dare come on the internet right. <laughs> like, there's, there's some who drives a fiesta <laughs> trying to tell me to make more money <laughs> And then, and then tell me, and yo, they tell me that intrinsically her worth demands a six figure man. And I'm like, why? Just the same way I would say to Fresh, what makes you think you deserve a dime? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what makes you think you deserve Vex a says, but the soft girl era was never about this. Um, Y'all should speak up then, Vex. Yeah, because I, I don't. I guess I, I, I guess I missed the good, the good soft girl era because I'm just in the dark one right now. So the what soft pony, the soft girl era, boom, was ruined by uh, quasi feminists, yeah, women yeah. who brought in a message of not equality but domination, right? And through their domination, they've now opened it up to these type of motherfuckers. Like the dude with the camera was my favorite one. He's just like, show me you're worth it. By renting my Airbnb. Right. No, that guy was great. That guy had some great ones. <laughs> Rent his Airbnb and show him that you're not so brokey. Um, the the war between men and women will never end. This is another. This is just another ammo, for, uh, an excuse not to date or trust the opposite sex. Right. Guys, um, we're about to sign off. Fat Mantis is saying, trust the opposite. Well, don't trust the opposite sex, but uh, you know. Uh, be moderate about it. <laughs> Yo, Some of these hoes don't deserve your respect. Well, there are many, many valuable hoes out there that you should give respect and love to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ho hocus. Um, <laughs> as we sign off, man, make sure you tap into Riz Radio, man, on Live 365. Then you can catch myself 
Sunday nights and Thursday nights, 10 p.m. to 2 a.m. with Mike Check. All your hip hop news, man, breaking down everything going on in the zeitgeist of hip hop and popular culture. And my man Manchester has a show. What Monday through Friday or Monday through Thursday? No, it's, it's Monday through Friday. It's noon to 4 p.m. Um, Eastern. It's burn your degree. I'm the middle middle of the day guy, and it's a good time. Shenanigans ensue. Right. And also today's best hit music. But this is the Fat Mantis signing off. Remember to like, share, and subscribe. Remember to keep tuning in to the Fanboy Modeling School. Our permanent day yet to be determined. Drizzle, drizzle. Drizzle, drizzle, baby. <laughs> That's the way to sign it off. Until next time, ciao for now. Be a